hype runs coming out from these players here. So let's go. Looks like the countdown has happened and they will be beginning here momentarily. Yeah, just to preface this uh, a little bit in the any percent category, and then they go. Um, there are only 12 speedrunners that have a time less than 44 minutes. And of those 12, seven of them have a time below 43. And finally, out of those seven, three of them have the sub 42. And those are these three players. And Wild, you've actually been in a, a race with Behemoth and Zosti uh, in, earlier this year at AGDQ. What can you tell, tell me about those guys? It's scary, man. It's scary. Let me tell you, like it, it was, it was, it was, you know, it's a bit surreal to be there, you know, with the like, you know, some of the the titans of Super Metroid, and like it's just, and watching, you know, them practice in the practice room and and just play and being able to see that in person is actually like a surreal experience here. But just you know, their their sheer technical skill is just so great. All all of these players. So you know we're in for we're in for a treat seeing you know the currently the top three Super Metroid players in the world all on one channel right now. So that is super super hype. Yeah. So as they are making their way out of the stairs station, um, I do want to make a request. You may have noticed that all three of our runners here are streaming to their own channels on Twitch, and we are actually restreaming them here. Uh, on the speed gaming channel, so there's going to be a delay. Uh, I just want to ask uh, for no spoilers. You know, if one of the runners dies or makes a huge mistake that kills the run, uh, I think it'll just be more enjoyable for us here at speed gaming if we just uh, keep it spoiler free. So uh, if you can all uh, adhere to that request, uh, I think we'll all just have a good time watching these attempts as they, these guys are on their way to Planet Zebs. Yeah, and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be really awesome. Um, and so along the uh, along the way here, you're gonna be seeing in the bottom right hand corner we do have a uh, a box for the pace that each of these players are on. Um, and what you'll be seeing there once they start hitting some of the uh, segments that we have marked down for these uh, players, you'll see some times start to come up. Um, and then you'll see time versus their own personal best and versus the world record. See, so it'll tell you how far ahead or behind they currently are. Um, and so we are piloting this and it's, it's, you know, going to be super, super awesome, um, to kind of keep you guys informed on, uh, how, uh, far ahead and behind they are. So, so the first thing you're going to see here is, uh, all three of these players have the moonwalk enabled and that's going to enable, that's going to allow them to do this glitch here where they just fall really quickly down this, uh, criteria shaft. You just saw it. Um, we call that the moonfall. And it was actually found, you know, just a couple months ago, relatively recently. And essentially, it, there's no cap on your falling speed. So, you know, if you were to sit in an endless shaft, you would just keep falling endlessly more and more quickly. Um, so, really, really fun thing, you know. But before that, Moonwalk was just seen as some, you know, weird special uh, option that n didn't have any function really other than for a little bit of swag. But now it's actually got a, a good purpose. Yeah, you see a little variation in the strats there, Behemoth uh, going to the top of the, the shot blocks there and then falling on the right side, and you see some down back action from Zost and Osa Goats. Now, there is a reason for that, uh, as a Behemoth does not actually have any button on his controller mapped to the angle down uh, uh, keys excuse me um so he does need to change up a couple of his strats to account for that and so that's one of the ones where it would be a little bit more difficult for him to actually crouch and angle down there um so he just edits his strat just a little bit um and so i believe each of these players all have a different control scheme and that's one interesting thing that you know you'll you'll notice when you play super metroid is that pretty much the entire controller is utilized every single button and it's you know different for everybody's going to have their own uh configuration that's the most comfortable for them no there's there's very few players who, who have you know it's, uh, in the top you know like 10 or so that have a uh, identical control scheme really yeah, great climbs yo go ahead sorry yeah uh pretty good climb so far looks like this is the uh, a little bit behind <laughs> might opt to reset here having a little trouble in the parlor but uh yeah pretty good climb so far yeah Behemoth doing a little bit of ledge grabbing going up the criteria shaft and uh, looks like 
uh, right in front of them is oats and goats first to the bombs and this is a pretty standard bombs time for them they're getting the bombs uh, around like 40 or yeah four minutes and 44 seconds mm -hmm. somewhere around there that's pretty good especially with that the moonfall definitely yeah it's really really great bomb time and so like we like we mentioned you know um if you have seen other uh episodes of chase for the record you might have noticed as this jd also mentioned that you know the uh usually start with a race but again since the, the the nature of this run is a bit longer than other games that have been featured for chase for the record you know these runners have just been instructed to you know just reset whenever you feel like you need to just go for that go for that awesome pace that that you that ideal pace that you would like so that is what we, what, we, what we will be seeing from these players. So yeah, uh, so it's just for you said, he's going to do another attempt. Uh, again, these guys aren't actually racing each other, so... Um, for, these guys are going um, through the Terminator, and uh, looks like Behemoth made a little bit of a mistake there, going into a morph. <laughs> Usually you don't see that, but looks like it worked out for him. Yeah, it seemed like he, his uh, second missile ended up missing the waiver, and he wanted, didn't want to get hit by it to conserve his health. So it looks like he just opted to mock ball underneath to uh, avoid taking that damage. Because in this uh, in this route, you want to conserve as much health as you can, because they are going to be going to the wreck ship area first. Um, which, if you've never seen a speed run in, and you have played this game casually, sequentially the uh, wreck ship area is the second area of the game that you'll be uh, making your way towards. Um, but it's a very dangerous area with only the power suit, so you want to save as much energy as you can, um, just in case you do get hit by uh, the boss or a couple of other enemies there. Yeah, so far it looks like Oats uh, is on a pretty good start. Just, um... He said he was like, he just, we just had TwitchCon and um, he said he has, he's kind of going, going in cold. Like he hasn't really been playing it as much. Uh, he's in top form right now. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, it's, it's an interesting thing, you know, just from my own experience of playing Super Metroid. Sometimes, you know, like a couple days of a break, you can come back and play, you know, just as well or even a little bit better than you were before. You know, it's, it seems a little counterintuitive, but it just it's just the way things seem to work sometimes. So this is interesting to me. Um, I know that Zos, sometimes he'll just skip this missile here right next to charge uh, if they get ammo drops. But it uh, looks like I don't think Behemoth or Oats are going to deviate from that. They're just going to grab that missile pack right there. Um, usually they get about 19 percent of the items to finish any percent so uh they're only going to get about 15 maximum missiles and i believe that's uh you know if they do get those ammo drops that they want they'll end up picking up another missile pack later on so they don't have to skip it if they are going to be going 50 and i believe that's the missiles before wave beam correct yes yeah So here we go. We've got Oats and Goats here going up Red Tower with a nice hero shot, making it past those uh, those waivers uh, 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 or rippers, excuse me. Um, cool little uh, manipulation there of the rippers as you saw them both players jump and uh, do a little jump and then shoot, and that's to um, move the the second ripper there, get him to move off screen a little bit so the shot can travel past it. Otherwise, it would it'd end up hitting it and the shot wouldn't go all the way to the ceiling. Um, so the Super Metroid is just full of little little movement things that, that make a huge difference um, just constantly through the game. And so that's what, you know, in my opinion, makes it such a wonderful speed game. There's so many little things that you can always work on to improve your, uh, your technical ability. So do you want to talk about this uh, this next little segment here coming up for both uh, Oats and Behemoth, JD? Uh, sure. So right here, they're coming up to one of the, I guess, one of the earliest choke points in the game. This is the moat, and uh, there are a couple ways you can get past it. But if you fall into this water, it's going to be a huge, uh, it's going to be a huge time loss. As we see, Ozen goes. It looks like he's setting up for the continuous wall jump. Um, basically, there's a setup as you go through the 
the room, and he there he gets it. He's aqua- across the moat. There we see Behemoth. He has fallen into the water. That's going to cost him uh, maybe about a dozen seconds or so. But uh, as we see, oh, it's, he's 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 doing pretty good uh, in this speed run so far. This other method that Behemoth is doing, he's doing a, a double bomb jump, horizontal bomb jump, which. You know, doing normal bomb drums is uh, pretty impressive. That you know, it's a great way to sequence break the game. This is like four times the difficulty. <laughs> like, just the most insane strat that uh, I can think of. Just skipping that one section and getting you into uh, early wreck ship. Yeah, I remember there was a time when. Um... You know, you really only ever saw it in the uh, in the low percent categories um, before this route really became mainstream. And the low percent categories weren't really as optimized nearly as much as any percent was. And so um, that the trick, the CWJ and the you know diagonal bomb jumping wasn't as commonplace. And so therefore it was a lot more difficult to, to do as it wasn't as practiced and, and looked into. But now it's, it's you know, still very difficult, like you said, but... Um, you know, people t- people have, have really uh, worked into making it a little as, as consistent as you can a uh, frame perfect into two frame jump. But uh, both these players, uh, Oats and Behemoth, in f- fighting Fantoon right now. Looks like Oats did actually end up prematurely supering Fantoon, which would enrage him. I think Behemoth got a mid pattern, so not too bad RNG so far in his first round, and then another mid. So you know, pretty average RNG here. Uh, with a nice two-round Doppler, but with a 11, 22, um, 11 minute, 22 second Fantoon kill, he's quite far behind uh, his his own world record there, where he got a 10, 59 Fantoon kill, I believe. Um, so you're just going to go ahead and up to reset there a lot, and that's probably where we're going to be seeing a lot of the resets is going to be at the moat, as JD was saying, you know, the, the continuous wall jump. If you end up missing that, it can be a huge uh, time sink. Um, again, and, and with Fantoon too, Fantoon's another benchmark, you know, a lot of these players want to be hitting that sub-11 Fantoon kill, and that's, that's the kind of pace that they're looking for. That's probably going to be another really heavy reset point we're going to be seeing here today. And so actually we're going to be seeing here, like JD said, Zos, you know, usually might uh, skip these missiles, but with zero missile right here, he's definitely going to need to pick those uh, pick those up. Yeah, just to give you um, a little insight into the any percent record, uh, Behemoth got this 4140 uh, on October 9th, 2017. And uh, <laughs> it's pretty, very impressive time, um, but... The any percent record has only changed between three different players, and you're seeing them right here, ever since uh, 2013. Like it's it's mostly been held by Zos. Uh, let me get the info for you. Yeah, while you're grabbing that, you know, like you said, just these three players right here, just going back and forth between the three of them. Um, you know, really since this uh, this route really became more uh, mainstream. Um, and uh, it's just been crazy to see the time just get brought down so much. You know, before this before this uh, route, this boss order route became um, the uh, standard. The the world record was uh, 4408 by Zost. Um, and so you know, in those last like three years, the record has gone down by you know almost like two and a half minutes. Um, so yeah, so ever since October 8th of 2013. Zos gets uh, a 44-54 with the old route, um, and when, what we mean by an old route is there, there was a, a traditional um, way of beating the game, and the boss order would be going through Kraid, then fighting Fantoon, then Dragon, then Ridley. Um, so ever since Zos got that record in uh, in 2013, he's been like slowly improving it. He got it. I uh, got a 44-08. Uh, that was the lowest time for uh, Crane, Fantoon, Dragon, Ridley uh, at that point. Then on August 28, 2014, uh, the following year, Behemoth changes up the boss order, starts doing this wreck ship early route, where we 
fight Fantoon first, then fight Ridley, Kraid, and then finish up with Dragon. And he had a time of 43-48. So uh, quite a drastic change there. And then it's just been back and forth between Behemoth and Zos all throughout 2015. And then uh, Oats and Goats in early 2016, in March 18th, got himself uh, a 42-10 with uh, this route and, uh, you know, pretty much solidified his status as uh, one of the the best any percent runners in Super Metroid. Yeah, just absolutely ridiculous. You know, this the, the competition, the, the w amount that you can push this game, and it still has room to be pushed, you know, and, and speaking, this is, you know, relatively speaking with the, the skill of the, the, you know, top three runners here is the world record early game by Behemoth wasn't necessarily like the, as, as good as it could be. Um, you know, he was at Behemoth, you know, in his own personal best before he got the world record was he was actually a bit behind his run by uh, the time he got to the gravity suit. So, you know, there's still, it, it was just kind of like average play for, for these players. And so there's still early game time to be made up. Um, you know, but his, uh, his, uh, lower Norfair and uh, Meridia segment were very, very good. So, you know, there's, there's always more time to be made. So Zost here, having got CWJ first try, fighting Fantoon right now. And a nice two round from him as well. I missed the uh, first pattern, but it looked like a slow there on the second one as well. So with Fantoon, there's a couple of different, uh, patterns that he can give you. Um, a fast, a mid, and a slow, and that just references the amount of time that it that it takes for him to uh, become vulnerable to your attacks. Obviously, fast is the best because it, you have to wait the least amount of time, and therefore, for a speedrun, that's what you want. So, Behemoth getting a little bit unlucky there with the bomb trezo drops. And so I see some questions about the uh, the splits in the bottom right here. So we haven't nothing, no information has come up yet. Um, but that's because none of these players have reached gravity. So that's going to be the very first um, split that we have set up for these players is when they touch the gravity suit. Um, so it's looking like Zost is likely going to be making it there first here. Um, and so then we'll start to see some information pop up on uh, in that in that uh, lower right box there for you guys. Uh, the clip that Zos did into to get uh, in that large wreck ship room, it's not really um, too difficult at all. It's it's fairly straightforward, really. All you need to do is just break your spin um, when your sprite is touching the, the top of the the seat that that one tile ceiling there, and then just yeah, break your spin, extend by extending your hitbox somehow, and that pushes you um, just a few pixels into the ground, which allows you to crouch jump up and clip through the uh, the ledge. There's a little bit more. Uh, technical explanation that could go into that, but that's essentially what happens. It's fairly straightforward. And, you know, that, that kind of clip is seen all over the game. Um, really only that one time. Actually, no, there's there's two times where that uh, is shown. And once when they're exiting Lower Norfair, they'll do another clip of the same nature. Um, and it's also, you know, done in, uh, in other runs as well, in other areas. So here goes Zost about to grab Gravity Suit. We're going to go ahead and see some information here pop up a little bit, a little bit after he grabs Gravity um, on uh, where he stands on his pace and uh, where he stands versus world record. And so just due to the nature of uh, how we've got this uh, this split set up, it will take a second, but there you see it has popped up here. So versus um, Zost's own personal best, he is 20 seconds behind, but versus the world record, he's only 10 seconds behind. 
Um, so, you know, like I did mention, you know, the, the early game in the uh, in the world record is not the strongest, but the but his but uh, Behemoth's run in you know the lower Norfair and Meridia segments was very very good. Um, so, you know, we'll if uh, Zos run is able to continue, we'll kind of see that. Um, represented in the uh, in the splits there. Yeah, you can see the, like the early game how much it, of, of a difference it makes, uh, especially with the RNG you get from the, the fancy boss. Uh, most of these runners, in their own personal bests and in the record, they get they get really favorable patterns. So we are not looking for any slow patterns of any kind that is no good in, in zos 41 49 he gets a fast mid behemoth gets also a fast mid in the world record and oats and goats actually gets the best pattern fast fast so uh any sort of slow pattern that's just going to cost them uh world record pace yeah and to just kind of give you a little bit of a, a um an idea of the the amount of time that it takes the difference between a fast pattern and a slow pattern is about 10 seconds so and there's there's absolutely nothing that you can do to control that uh, in in a real time setting um so you just kind of have to go with that um just roll with roll with what you get so now we're going to be seeing focusing in on zost here as he's uh, entering down into norfair um, he's going to be just collecting a couple of items here before heading, going straight into Lower Norfair, getting some items for to make this uh, the run go really, really fast. Um, particularly high jump, speed booster, ice beam. Yeah, and, so and wave. You, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you, this might be like sort of the boring portion of the run where it's like item collection, but you have to be really technical with your movement here. Uh, the world record is like the movement is so optimized so a any sort of you know if they these guys cut down on their mistakes here throughout these sections uh, they can make up like a few seconds for sure yeah it's it's you know you don't want to sleep on this section if you're if you're doing a run or you know because like jd said like you can you can lose a lot of time just from having you know suboptimal movements so there's never never a point where you can just kind of you know relax at all you want to make sure you're always on top of your game and, and making sure you're you're playing at your absolute best because you know small mistakes even with little small movement mistakes in a section like this where there's nothing really hard where you would lose a lot of time all the little stuff can really add up especially when you're you know going for that world record that's a really tough strat there that uh, Zos is trying to do. So this is uh, really important. <laughs> they have to do a mock ball to get out of uh, this ice palace area that, that we like to call. Um, and that's to go under that gate that Zos just rolled under. If you if that gate traps you, you lose at least like 20 seconds. So you need to make sure you get that mock ball out of uh, the ice beam area. Another uh, important thing is ammo management. So uh, the second number there on the HUD is the super missile count. And these guys need super missiles uh, in order to do this next boss fight uh, as quickly as possible. The next boss is Ridley. So uh, the more supers you have, the better. As we see a bubble mountain climb from Zeus, uh, looks like he's gonna have to do a, a, a backup strat. But getting a uh, super from the waiver there as well as the uh, nearly guaranteed one from the CAC attack is nice. So we'll see after he gets speedy, you know, if he decides to um, farm at the well, how many times the, the farm well there, there's some bugs that pop up, you know, see, we'll see how many times he decides to farm, how many supers he, he gets just due to just his luck factor. Um, you know, obviously the more the better for him. Yeah, I think uh, Behemoth farms about two times, and he gets he gets pretty good drops. So uh, if Zos can keep it to at least two, uh, should be should be a pretty good pace for him. Okay, so that was pretty good. He got you know two supers there, and he's got third after a third uh, farm. So not too bad. He's got maximum supers right now so it's not or i'm sorry not maximum but he's got uh five out of his ten 
Yeah, I, I guess the, with the strat that these guys are doing, the strats that they're doing, I guess five is an okay number. Definitely not. <laughs> definitely would want to have more for sure. But um, with how long it takes to farm, like sometimes you just gotta roll with what you have. Yeah, there's a point at which it's just not worth it um, to continue to, to farm. And so what you did see there is Zost actually skipped over that missile pack. So that's that's the one that uh, players have been st starting to skip uh, now to get down to that ammo, final ammo count of 15 missiles and 10 super missiles, as JD uh, alluded to earlier on. Um, and that's the one that Zost actually would, or these players would pick up if they ended up deciding to skip the, uh, the missile pack right before charge. Um, and as you could assume, it would be faster to grab that uh, that wave beam one instead of skipping it, because jumping over it, you, you're losing some of your speed there, can't make it quite across the gap entirely, et cetera, et cetera. So this is actually a very crucial trick that's coming up. Uh, so this is setting up for a shine spark charge, and he's going to try and do damage boost right here. And he's well done. It. Yeah, that's yeah. what we call the lava spark. Uh, I think he's gonna pause, turn off um, ice and spacer, so that he has only the wave beam, and that's gonna enable him to do a wave beam combo, uh, or excuse me, a power bomb combo. So basically, if you hold down charge and you have power bombs equipped, you can perform a special beam combo, and with the wave, uh, we like to call it the X factor, and it deals uh, about. 1200 damage to uh, anything it hits uh, if you have all four, four par particles connect. So that's a really handy little trick that you can do here in Super Metroid. And uh, one little thing that you know you might not normally, to the, to the untrained eye, you might not notice, but actually on uh, the elevators where you travel down, um, Samus's sprite normally needs to fully disappear off of the screen before the transition happens. But what we saw Zos do there is he actually paused right before he went on the elevator and then activated the elevator. And what that did was actually the transition blocks are right at the bottom of the screen. And so Samus usually passes through them, but when you come out of a pause on a down elevator, um, the, you'll activate the transition blocks as soon as Samus's feet touch the bottom of the screen. So that saves a, around 40 frames, I believe. So it's just a little time saved there for a, for a pause that's, uh, that's necessary. And right here, Zos is sparking to kill these key hunters. Not only is that they have a chance of dropping some supers for him, but also the more of these key enemies that you can kill in this room, the better, because they generate a lot of lag when you lay these power bombs. Um, multiple seconds of lag over the course of those two power bombs if you don't have any key hunters killed. Um, so making sure that you kill those is good for you know just the chance of drops and also more so the uh, the amount of lag that you that is reduced. Yeah, Zos is just uh, flying through these rooms. It's hard to keep up with the action, but I uh, hope you guys are, are wow. enjoying it. We also have Behemoth. He is on a pretty decent run right now uh, up on the top right. And you're going to see Zos, he's going to use these Shine Sparks to kill these Metal Pirates. Uh, he wants those drops right there. He's up to eight supers. Um, it's a pretty good number. He's going to do some farming right before he goes into Ridley. And then uh, he's going to do that special beam combo. Uh, on the boss to deal lots of damage to him. Ooh, getting a power bomb there from the uh, that Zebo. Not what he wanted. They have a much higher chance to drop a super missile. He, you know, as many supers as he could get is great. There's that X factor that JD was talking about. And so what you're going to see is you're going to do just a couple of more here. Really nice X factors. Really connecting all of them. Um, well done for Zost. And so what you're going to see for them do is they have all the damage calculated and what they're doing is they're counting how many shots they're doing to Ridley um, and just changing the amount of charge shots that they that they are using um, depending on how many X-Factors they did, how many super missiles they have. Um, so it's a little bit dynamic, the fight, um, but uh, these players are very well versed and, and have excellent fights. Zost with a really great fight right now so far. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually getting kind of dangerous for him because he's taking uh, a little bit of damage, but um, yeah, he should be fine. Uh, the less damage you can take against fighting Ridley, the better, because uh, in order to survive leaving Lower Norfair, you have to get past uh, a lot of these uh, a lot of these enemies, and most of them do at least 40, uh, sometimes 50 wow. amounts of okay. damage to you. And that was a, a really was, good grab. Yeah, that, no, was, that was a beautiful, beautiful fight. You know, us, like, and he was 
that damage he was taking that you said, you know, was intentional just to be as quick as possible. So he, that he was uh, just really going going ham on that fight and really, really well done. Um, so just in, you know, doing a little bit of extra uh, health farming here, because like JD said, 40 to 50 damage per hit from pretty much any of the enemies. Um, it's going to be going to be dangerous. Yeah, he's doing a good job right now. Uh, having around uh, 200 health is pretty good. And he's actually going to do the D boost, uh, a damage boost, excuse me, out of this area. We call this the wasteland. And then he's going to do uh, a little stutter right there. Okay. Use this speed ball to break those blocks right there. And that uh, that's great time save. Really, really nice. And there was that uh, that other clip that I mentioned that you saw in the rickship before. Did one right there. Lay the power bomb at a specific height to um, only break out the uh, all of those blocks except for the top ones. And then he clipped up through, damage boosted off of that uh, side hopping enemy called the Skiga, um, and made it out there. So now he's going to have to be a little bit careful here. So Zos has got 97 health. The next enemies that he's going to have to worry about again are those red flying one enemies, the Key Hunters each dealing 50 damage per hit. So he can only afford to take one of those right now. So there are some manipulation strats to move, uh, manipulate their movement so that you can get around them really quickly. We'll see if Zost decides to go for that. He already fell on one of those platforms, so might be a little bit tricky here from him. Then tried to get through with his iframes, but unfortunately ran into that key hunter there. So he is going to need to start his run over. Yeah, again, um... The, that's uh, just another huge choke point. We call those last three Kai Hunters, the three Musketeers. <laughs> to get past them, like your movement has to be pretty precise. Uh, unfortunately, just wasn't there for Zost, and uh, he's going to have to start another attempt. But uh, in the meantime, we do have Behemoth and Otengos on pretty decent runs themselves, so uh, everything's not lost. <laughs> Yeah, and just in time to see uh, another Lava Spark here from Behemoth. Is charge Okay, yeah, so he, he charged his Spark excellently done. He charged his Spark really, um, not on the edge of the uh, platform there. Um, so we didn't fall off immediately. And so what he needed to do to account for that, since you're the, the, the timing window that you have to initiate the spark after the damage boost is very, very tight. And so if you don't charge your spark right on the edge and kind of just fall off, um, you need to do what uh, you saw behemoth do was there was morph and then unmorph to, um, slow your fall speed down so that you can get hit right away by that fireball and then hit that damage boost as quickly as you can. Yeah, welcome to Super Metroid. There are strats and strats. Just the tech, how technical this game can be, makes it like one of the most, uh, I guess, maybe satisfying speed games to run. And uh, it can be very overwhelming uh, to the untrained eye, but uh, I think that just makes it all the more uh, satisfying to watch. Agreed, 100%. Yeah, it looks like Behemoth is uh, doing really good. You can see right there at the top right, we do have the paces for the runners, and uh, his split time for coming into Lower Norfair uh, was not too far off from the world record run. Yeah, very, very close. Three seconds. Now, like I have mentioned a couple of times here, Behemoth's world record run, his Lower Norfair and Meridia segments were excellent. Very, very, very good. And so, you know, making sure to keep pace with the with the, his world record there is going to need some really, really solid movement throughout these sections. Now, we did see a, a very nice double Kago where uh, uh, Zost got through both of these platforms. Behemoth does it executed perfectly as well. It was really, really great there. Um, and what you saw him do is actually take damage from the spikes before going uh, down through those platforms. If you just clip through those platforms without taking damage first, the platforms will do 50 damage to you as opposed to the 15 that you would take from the spikes. So it's a total of 30 damage as opposed to 100. Um, and so, you know, that's just a, a nice way to save some health. Um, and it is possible to clip through both of them using the uh, vulnerability frames from the first platform, um, but if you end up messing that up, it would be, uh, you know, over 50 damage and as opposed to just the 50 there. Um, so this is a pretty good opening for Behemoth. Again, 
Yes, to do. Um, if you didn't have these super missiles, we'd have to do 60 shots on Ridley uh, with the amount of with like the beams he has and the charge shots. So 60 char charge shots just uh, without the supers. But because he has the super missiles, the super missiles will deal 600 damage to Ridley, uh, which is twice the amount of charge shots. So um, he only has to do about 30 charge shots plus uh, plus 16. And then the, the supers will finish off the rest of Ridley's health. Yep. So 46 charge shots for, for Beam. And he's, he's doing a great job. <laughs> he's not he taking is. that much damage. Uh, he's getting, he's manipulating Ridley to do this pogo pattern, and uh, that just reduces the. Uh, it's just like a safe spot right here, down on the bottom left. And one interesting thing, you know, again, another one of these little frame savers, something that you saw Behemoth do at the very start of the fight is he jumped vertically over Ridley and shot a charge shot down. Very nice fight. Very nice fight from. Uh, there on Ridley, but he jumped and shot a charge shot down from really high up on the screen, and that just saves a couple of frames. And the reason is you can actually sh release that charge shot before Ridley is actually vulnerable, and then have it hit him right as he becomes vulnerable. And because the charge shot is traveling a longer distance, but still hitting Ridley right when he becomes vulnerable, is during that time that the charge shot is traveling, you're able to start charging an additional charge shot. Um, so the farther away that you can release that shot, and the closer to when he becomes vulnerable, um, the Less, the more efficient you can be with uh, the charging of your of your beams, because every single time, every charge shot is uh, 60 frames or one whole second. So we see Behemoth. He's setting up for the uh, the little the Good. little speed ball there. Really well done. Uh, his movement's looking really clean. I, I would say out of these three runners, Behemoth probably has the best chance to beat his own record because uh, he's just been playing uh, a lot more and uh, he's just looking really clean on his movement. Like, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. Like Behemoth's just been on fire lately. It just absolutely incredible to watch. How, like even just this, his vertical ascension up, the, up that room right there, just every single down grab, ledge grab was just super clean, not floating above any of the platforms at all, just snapping right down onto it, getting right up to the next part. Now here comes the Three Musketeers room for Behemoth. He can take two hits here. Good manipulation, and looks like he's just he can take that hit right there and head right on out. Excellently done. Oats and goats. We saw with the good lava spark going for uh, fast pillars right now. Another spark here and nailing that. Really low as well, so that was that was good. Oh, very nicely done there, Behemoth. You can't mm -hmm. take too long in that room coming out of Lord Narfair, you're trying to you're trying to bomb out those blocks in a certain way so that uh, you make it to that area with the uh, the little floating orb, the little blue orb, and that's going to give you a boost. We call it the ball boost, uh, just to get onto that ledge. It seems very, very, uh, I guess, uh, asinine <laughs> when you see it. You're taking damage and you're just getting boosted onto that little ledge there. As we see, Oats, uh, he takes uh, a reset. I guess there was something he didn't like about that run. Uh, I didn't catch it. Uh, I think he either missed the Shine Spark for the Key Hunters. Uh, he was just exiting Amphitheater, so I, I, I missed it as well. I was watching uh, Behemoth. Um, I see. Yeah, this is kind of another, uh, another uh, little bit of a lull in the run. Um, this section here before going to, uh, through Kraid into Meridia. Um, here he just plays again, though. The movement in this section can be pretty tricky, especially in this room here, making sure you kill these enemies and then keep your speed by jumping through the door, just like that. Um, Behemoth's now going to go for the uh, the quick kill on Kraid, and he's hoping for some really good drops. The reason for doing Kraid right before Meridia is you need to... He's already got an absolutely insane super count right now of nine. Um, just one off from his maximum, so he's going to be hoping for some power bombs and supers, really, uh, to make his uh, um, traversal through Meridia and boss fight efficiency at uh, as high as he can. Alright, so getting uh, three supers there, going back up to nine, and two power bombs. So that's, he's looking in, in pretty decent shape, as far as ammo is concerned. Yeah, we're gonna see uh, on the pace where Behemoth is compared to the world record. 
but uh, I think he's just a little bit behind. We'll, we'll find out. Nice little damage boost right there, and uh, he's gonna he's gonna kill that mini crate. Usually, that mini crate drops uh, mostly super missiles, so that's what that's what Behemoth needs for this next area coming up in Meridia, because he's gonna have to fight a mini boss, and then uh, the actual boss, the last boss that they're gonna do in this route is Dragon. So, uh, gotta have that ammo. Yep. Yeah, and uh, Mini Crate drops five drops, four initially, and then a, a fifth um, a little bit later, and his drop rate for Super Missiles is very, very high, and Behemoth only needed one to get to max, or two, I guess, technically, if you use the Super to kill Mini Crate. Um, and so he's pretty much guaranteed to get those ones to get back up to max that he needed. So we call this area the Mountain Doom. He's gonna do it as Shine Spark right there, just to get himself up to that door. If these guys don't have enough energy for that Shine Spark, they're actually just gonna do a little backup strat where they jump up there with some wall jumps. But uh, you have to use a Power Bomb right here to get you access into the Aqueduct, and then uh, climb up into this mini boss fight. This is uh, this mini boss is not to be taken lightly. This is a uh, bot wound. So we see a little trouble right there. Uh, maybe he lost a second there trying to get into this room. But then he's going to open up this fight with an X Factor and then finish off the boss with uh, six super missiles. Well done. Yeah. And uh, why shouldn't it be taken lightly, JD? Enlighten me. Okay. So that mini boss, bot wound, as we see uh, Behemoth getting the last energy tank he's going to need. He gets three energy tanks uh, throughout the annual percent run. But that mini boss, Bot Moon, let me tell you, uh, its hitbox <laughs> is uh, its a mystery. It's an enigma. I have no idea how to describe it. But, um, That's perfect, accurate, I would say. Yeah. Just sometimes uh, when you're trying to land these X factors on Bot Moon, uh, they don't always connect. Uh, your, your, your timing has to be precise, and uh, as well as trying to hit it, hit Bawoon with these super missiles. But um, we have ba we have Behemoth entering Dragon's room, and the first thing he needs to do he needs to uh, clear out these turrets. He's really low on ammo. Um, usually, uh, these speedrunners they're trying to go for a really quick boss kill uh, using. A shine spark and uh, some of their ammo and uh, looks like it might just be solely shine sparks for uh, behemoth but we'll see he's doing it he's doing a charge shot he's gonna use that he's gonna use all the rest of his ammo and yep. he, there it is it's the uh, the quick two round boss fight he's trying to get a spike suit right here can you just uh, explain the spike suit I can yeah so um, he's not he, he, he went ahead and gave up on it so um, essentially what spike suit is is if you have a shine spark charge um, and then you take damage from spikes or the the electricity at that point uh, there for him and you unmorph the frame after you take damage and then I believe it's 10 frames later press jump you will um, initiate a spark and activate a spark but then you will hover in the air until you um, do another uh, another set of shine spark inputs, but you'll um, be essentially in the um, permanently having a shine spark stored state for like uh, the poor way to uh, word that. But it, I think you you want the, the the flashing white that you have when you charge a shine spark. You're per basically permanently in that state, and so what that does is it allows you to actually run um, up to the uh, Coliseum where you saw Behemoth uh, do the Shine Spark back across that large room along the ceiling. Um, it allows you to run to that position as opposed to walk, which you are forced to do with the blue suit that you saw Behemoth do. Um, and you also don't have to pause to do the gravity jump or do bomb jumps um, to get up to the that door as well. So it just it saves, it saves a couple of seconds there, around two, I believe, if you do get it correctly, is what uh, Behemoth has told me at one point um but one thing i'd like to mention um that we uh we, uh that's that's exclusive to the uh chase for the record series is that we do have um some cash prizes on the line for these players here hello a any yeah hello yeah and it's no uh no insignificant prize either for any player who gets a personal best in, during the during this uh, during this series here, we they will receive a one hundred dollar cash prize. Now, 
if any of these players were to get a world record during this time, there is a $1,000 prize with their name on it waiting for them. So there is some pretty hefty, hefty prizes here of these players. So just extra incentive, not only, you know, getting a really awesome time, but there is money on the line. Yeah, all three of these runners have agreed to this. It's not something that we just threw out there. <laughs> this is Chase for the Record on Speed Gaming, and it's serious business, guys. <laughs> yeah, it is serious business. And now one thing um, that we did have to implement here that you're going to be seeing Behemoth do in just a second um, is uh, to make sure that, that runs are valid. We will have them doing a bomb spread here in the uh, Golden 4 room, as you just see Behemoth there. Wonderful. Yeah, they were making some jokes about, uh, you know, splice, <laughs> splicing some runs <laughs> to get this cash prize. Uh, but we, we're taking uh, some steps to make sure we have the right validations. But um, suffice to say, if these guys are actually on world record, world record pace, you know, the heart rate goes up, you know, they might they start to get nervous, you know, uh, they could forget, you know, which is understandable, but um, we just want to throw a little something uh, extra in there for the, the players, you know, uh, their participation is greatly appreciated. I'm glad you guys are here watching yeah. this event. Uh, just wanted to remind you that you are watching Speed Gaming. Uh, if you go to speedgaming.org, there are links there for the schedule uh, and events that are upcoming and ongoing. We've got like four different channels for just speed runs and tournaments. Everything you want to watch is here. And uh, we have Behemoth entering uh, Torian. He's not on world record pace, sad to say, but. Um, you know, I think it's just going to give him a little more confidence if he can just finish this run out. Well, I do want to mention, though, that uh, in his world record run, he lost about 13, 12 or 13 seconds. I can't remember exactly what it was uh, in from G4 to the very end compared to his previous personal best. So he does have the time there to save. Um, a lot of it was in the escape. Um, there were some mistakes that he made in the escape uh, towards the end. So he does have some time to make up here. So it's it's not likely there'd be a lot of time plus a little bit extra. Um, but, you know, it's definitely not uh, impossible. Um, and so just to kind of get to uh, expand a little bit on what you were saying, GD, there's just uh, tons and tons of awesome speed earning events, tournaments, um, other, you know, things like Chase the, chase for the Record, um, showcase events, everything going on on, you know, the, the, the twitch.tv slash speed gaming channels. And like you said, there's multiple channels. There's this one you're watching right now. Um, and then there are additional three other channels, Speed Gaming 2, 3, and 4. So make sure you definitely follow all of those channels to satisfy your, your speed running itch at pretty much any time. There's lots. Of, there's a Super Metroid tournament going on right now, actually, a randomizer tournament uh, currently. Um, there's a couple other ones. There's a, uh, a Link, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past randomizer tournament as well. Um, I think I've been seeing a Final Fantasy tournament. Um, there's tons of stuff. You know, all of that information is there for you underneath the channel here as Behemoth heads on in to the final area, Turian, with a nice down back Zeb skip here. Yeah, so to sort of explain what just happened right there, uh, basically they're doing another sequence break, and uh, by freezing that little circular enemy that we call the Rinko, um, basically as it spawns right there at that point in front of that barrier, that Zepatite barrier, uh, we're fooling the game into thinking that Samus is on top of that frozen enemy. And then uh, that allows you to jump through the barrier uh, through a series of inputs. But right now, Behemoth, he's taking on Mother Brain 2, and he has to do 60 shots, and he has to make sure that he keeps his health above 300. So uh, he has 359 health as he gets tagged by that eye beam. That's really bad. But uh, he has to avoid these bombs that Mother Brain is spitting out, the eye beam, and these onion rings that we like to call them, uh, these blue rings. Uh, that can chain damage you, and uh, you can lose a lot of life if you take that. Yeah, I gotta say, 301 health or higher. There's not a whole lot of stuff that he can take damage from anymore right now. Uh, pretty much everything will do um, 
you know, over like 30 to 40 damage. Um, you know, if he gets hit by that bomb, I believe does 40. Each of the onion rings does 20, but getting hit by the onion rings, you know, you don't have any iframes. So if you get hit by multiple onion rings there, the, those blue rings again that JD said, he'll get just comboed um, and get dipped down below 300 health. So there's the ketchup beam that he absolutely cannot get hit by as it does 100 damage minimum if he only gets hit once. It has the potential of hitting you multiple times. Um, but now you know the Mother Brain is at three quarters of her health down. Um, so only another 15 shots since that initiated and it looks like he's just about to finish up here. And he is done with uh, Mother Brain 2. And as we can see, actually, in terms of the Mother Brain head hitting the floor, Behemoth was actually three seconds ahead. So like I, like I mentioned, he had that time to make up, so he is actually... It's really close. It's really yeah. close. We're rooting for Behemoth. Uh -oh. <laughs> see? He's chasing for the record right now. Uh, I don't Ooh, know. It's, okay. it's gonna be close. I don't want to. I don't want to say anything. Did you <laughs> yeah. Anything. So we're just gonna watch him finish this out. Can I get some take my energy in the chat right now for Behemoth? It's definitely like the last two minutes of this speedrun is definitely nerve-wracking especially when you're on pb pace because it's, it's like the simplest little things you actually have to finish up this boss fight here uh, mother brain's third mother brain's third phase um, you're gonna have to make sure you connect all these shots and then you have to do some platforming at the end of the game and uh it's it's nothing easy well and aside from the fact that you have to just sit here doing nothing thinking about all of that for like a minute and a half during this cutscene where you just literally can't do anything you just have to sit in your nerves and so here comes mother brain three fight here is going to stand a little bit closer to mother brain here to reduce the amount of lag you know the more of those the longer those hyper beam shots are on the screen the more lag it, it uh, induces so um, really nice fight here from behemoth so far wow excellent excellent fight So again, the record is 41 minutes, 40 seconds. So Behemoth has just under a minute here. <clears throat> I'm just gonna be quiet and watch this right now. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, really exciting, guys. Remember, you are watching Chase for the Record here on Speed Gaming. Hope you are enjoying the, uh, the attempts we have here for Super Metroid. One last thing that uh, Behemoth has to do here, he has to try and get this Moonfall. Looks like he nails it. Nails it. Yeah. This platforming is excellent. Behemoth Spark. Yeah, there's a... Uh, some of the players like to opt to do uh, a Shine Spark up the right side of that, that Crick here, Shams. Oh man, this is, this is, this is it's so <laughs> close. This is so close. Uh, uh, he has to go through a door transition. Um, yeah, I don't think it's gonna make it. But wow. What oh, a, a crazy like attempt. Three seconds off of two, three seconds off of world record. Wow, absolutely insane. Hats off to Behemoth for pulling off this X, this absolutely insane run. Three seconds, well, really like four seconds away from one thousand dollars. But this just goes to show, you know, we were just mentioning just like how amazing the, of a runner, you know, all of these runners are. You know, Behemoth just like just been on absolutely on fire recently. Excellent, excellent run. And this is this is you know the pinnacle of Super Metroid speedrunning right now. Everybody, this is this is what you're seeing. Excellent, excellent stuff. Yeah, so unfortunately, Behemoth did not get the world record. Three seconds off, and uh, he's just going to have to try again. Um, we, we're zooming in on Zost right here. He got himself the gravity suit, and uh, he's going to make his way down the Red Tower and into Norfair and see if he can get himself uh, on world record pace. 
and uh, that'll show up for you guys here in just a second whether or not he, he is actually on world record pace um little high five there from zos and oats or oh no i'm just sorry he's in the just quickly looking at oats screen i saw the wrong room they, you know, they're, high-fiving. Don't they're <laughs> high-fiving in spirit in spirit exactly <laughs> So there's some questions on Zost's feed, why he's got a, you know, duplicate uh, feed in his mini-map. He's just got a webcam pointed at his uh, at his television. Yeah, I think yeah, that's... Exactly. Yeah, he, he used to have problems with uh, his capturing program, and uh, sometimes it would just freeze up on him. So he decided to, like, point a webcam uh, towards his TV in case that happens to make sure, you know, he's actually still doing the speedrun. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, kind of like his watermark, you know? But yeah, you can see Zost um, versus his PB uh, is actually uh, 8 seconds behind, but versus the world record is actually ahead by 2 seconds, so pretty good. Um, I would say potentially, like, Zost is the one who can... I don't know, save the most time because his early game in his PB is ridiculously good. And uh, some of the strats that he does, is, they're, they're very different. And uh, yeah, just a lot of potential to save uh, the most time uh, versus uh, the other players in this any percent speedrun. So again, kind of the uh, during this the low 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 point of the run here again, you know, want to make sure your movement is on point. But uh, just want to take some time to to fill everybody in here. If you might be just tuning in, we are twitchtv slash speedgaming, uh, currently airing the uh, Super Metroid episode of Chase for the Record, where we have the top three speedrunners of Super Metroid in the any percent category, uh, top three in the world all racing or not racing but all doing attempts to try and get to um take that world record uh currently set by behemoth with a uh, 41 minute 40 second time um yeah for those who don't know um it was only just like about <laughs> about like a couple months ago that uh the record was still held by oats and goats and it had stood for almost a year so since like 2016 october oats and goats had uh his his pb that's that he has right now which is a 41 56 uh was the world record and then that was beaten uh september 26 2017 uh by zos with a 41 uh 49 and then finally, Behemoth takes takes that record with the 4140. So, uh, yeah, we've had a lot of great runs uh, in the past past couple of months for Super Metroid. It's it's really exciting. Yeah, we're seeing a little bit of farming there from uh, from from Zos. Uh, a little extra farming doesn't hurt at all. His ammo cow is looking really good. Again, uh, you want to have uh, as much ammo as you can, especially this uh, item that he has currently selected, super missiles. The more super missiles you have, uh, the better, as we see a really nice right yeah. side bubble mountain climb from Zos. It requires a very precise wall jump there to get... Uh... Oh, but he made it look like a breeze, but it's actually fairly precise there. You know, his ammo's looking really, really nice. And, and like JD said, any farming that you can do along the way um, to mitigate the, you know, your time that you're standing still, farming right after a speed booster here um, is, is good. So. so realistically, people are, so I'm seeing in the chat, people are asking, how much can the world record be improved? Realistically, I would say uh, by these players, maybe about 10 seconds. And you, mu you might think like only that much, but Super Metroid is just a very hard game to be consistent at. So like all these rooms, you can lose a lot of time just with the, the smallest little things. 
and uh, these guys are already getting like the best luck in their speed runs. So it's not really luck that they're. Uh, I mean, luck, luck. They want to have the best luck, but it's not really luck that's going to save them that time. Uh, so um, just being consistent throughout the rooms, uh, and I would say realistically, they could save ten seconds off of the world record. Yeah, and that ten seconds doesn't come from really large time-saving tricks, you know, because those are standard. Those are required for these players, you know, for their for their runs. And all that ten seconds is going to come from all of the little little tiny movement mistakes you know you saw uh, zost in uh, that first room um in uh, norfair was he was going uh into and that right there too like though all of those little things where he didn't actually get the door open all those add up over the course of the run and those account for those 10 seconds that you can save and so you just gotta make fewer and fewer of those little tiny mistakes in your run in addition to getting every all the other large time saving tricks and that's how that's how that time gets saved yeah, we almost saw we almost saw Behemoth beat his own world record. He was off by like three seconds, four seconds, I should say. Yeah. And uh, we're seeing Zost. He's about to enter the lower Norfair area. He has to set up the Shine Spark, get the D boost, and uh, a little he's far just, back. Yeah, a little too far to the right. That's uh, gonna cost him some time. He's gonna do a backup strat at the very least. A nice uh, gravity jump there. The way the the physics work with that is when you're in a liquid, water lava um your uh you know your momentum and speed values without the gravity suit which mitigates the uh the water physics um are they start much lower but they decrease much more slowly than they would in a, a normal no water physics setting so what you can do is you can actually you know jump with your gravity suit on which has your initial speed and momentum values much more high behind much higher and then you can take the gravity suit off as soon as you jump to then have those starting values very very high and then decrease very slowly as they do without the gravity suit which has the normal water physics so then it allows you to do very very high jumps um in uh in water physics areas so that's what you saw there we call that a, a gravity jump and that's also something that we did see in the behemoth's last run exiting out of the uh dragon room um as he as he did that with his uh, blue suit we might end up seeing that again if these players do not get um <clears throat> do not get the uh the spike suit so uh, zost here has got to be a little bit careful his health is kind of low um but nothing, nothing new, new for him. He, he knows exactly how to how to handle this. And some large health drops from those key hunters, which would be nice. Again, making sure you kill as many of those key hunters as you can with the those shine spark echoes to reduce the amount of lag, saving a couple of seconds in that room in lag time. Ooh, okay, that was actually really close right there. He almost made a mistake. Uh, he wanted to morph as he got to the top of that uh, little area there in the wasteland. And uh, he was very fortunate to avoid taking damage from uh, those big side hoppers. So now he's going to do some shine sparks. His super count is really good. If he goes it's in... excellent. Yeah, if he, if he uh, maintains this count and survives Ridley, uh, he's on pretty good pace, I want to say. Yeah, he definitely. He's going to do some farming for some more power bombs from these violas here, these blue um, circular enemies. And then he's going to shoot a super, hopefully get a super from these Zebos, and does not get it, unfortunately. But still, going in with this fight with nine supers is excellent. So, we're, you know, might see a really, really great fight here from Zos. Going for a third X Factor, even. Nicely done. Connected with all those and a fourth wow all right and one of them got hit by the tail so he connected out of those four x factors connected all particles except for one excellent and so each one of those particles jd did mention this um towards the beginning of the run each of those particles does 300 damage that's the equivalent to one charge shot um and so all four of them doing 1200 damage so for each each one of those particles that connects that's one fewer charge shot that he has to do Um, and so the math on this here, now that Ridley has changed colors to red, you know that he is halfway dead. So he's going to, with the amount of supers that he has to do, he's going to need to do 12 charge shots um, and then hit with all nine of those supers. As each super does 600 damage as opposed to the 300 that the charge shot does. 
I would. Oh, oh my god, that is That fight was so good. Yeah, wow. I would. I would say for Zeus, like the time that he can save the most uh, in his speed run is here at the Ridley fight because he does not get the most optimal Ridley fight. His health is uh, a little concerning. He's only got about 150, but uh, hopefully he can keep himself alive and uh, get himself out of low and over here. You can't really ask for a much better fight than that, execution-wise. Here's going to that Wasteland Speedball. And that clip coming up here. And yeah, nicely done. Yeah, hopefully uh, Zoe gets a little bit lucky. These, these Kai Hunters here are not to be trifled with either. Like, if he can get past here without taking any damage, he's in good shape. But um, it's going to be hard. Duh, that guy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and the, okay, so the, the key hunter from that top area came down with the second one, and they were both uh, in good positions. The reason why uh, he didn't use a power bomb to blow out those uh, three blocks and just use regular bombs instead, you might think, well, that's just slower, like, to use the three bombs of a power bomb, right? Well, for one thing, the power bomb's going to generate a lot of lag, but two, if you bomb those blocks, it actually, the key hunters have more time to move around into more favorable positions. So here we see again, Zos is going through, he got a much better intro to this room now, and uh, same second musketeer got him again. Uh, really unfortunate, as we did see, he was five seconds ahead of his personal best, only one second behind world record there. Um, so, Zos has been has been pulling out some really, really excellently paced runs. It's just, you know, the nature of this game. It's very hard. This game is very, very hard. And stuff like that can just happen. So, you know. Yeah, they have this to... Game, if you're gonna... Sorry, if you, just one... Like, if you're gonna run this game, it's just something that you gotta... You gotta learn to accept. It's, it's 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 tough. Things unfortunate things like that are gonna happen. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Pretty much at, at this point, this is those are the risks that um these speedrunners have to take. Like they have, have to, to do that area with only like uh, as little health as they have. So um, it's it's pretty much just up to the execution. Sometimes it's luck. Uh, trying to get past those those red Kai hunters, but um, yeah, it just didn't work out for Zos right there. But we have Oats and Goats. He's uh, he's pretty behind on his splits, but um, he can save up a lot of time compared uh, to his PB. He does make a he does have a very subpar Dragon fight, uh, I will say. So it might not look uh, very good for him uh, compared to his pace, but if he keeps up. You know, playing well, he could he could do well and end up with maybe a PB at least. And you know, we say things like subpar or you know, there's like not quite average play for these players or whatever. And that's not saying that these players are are bad. It's it's comparing them to we what we know that they're capable of. Because you know, they're all they're all capable of of you know the world record and, and very high caliber play. Um, and so we're just comparing to what you know what they could possibly pull out. Um, yeah, so. for those who do not know, th there are theory tasks of, you know, of Super Metroid, of this, of this uh, particular speedrun, the any percent run. Do you want to quickly explain what a theory task is for people who sure. don't Sure, so like, um, if you're familiar with uh, what a task is, a task is a tool assisted speedrun, and it just like, you see pretty much all these computer inputs put throughout the game and it just completes the game as quickly as possible uh, a theory task is basically uh, taking into account uh, the human capability uh, so anything that's humanly humanly capable by speedrunners uh, for the most part is put into the theory task and uh, it, for this speedrun it goes as low as uh, a 40 minute just barely like a 40 minute speed run time and these guys are just barely cutting 42 minutes so um that's just uh just how it is there is a lot of luck manipulation in the theory tasks and stuff like that but uh yeah these guys can they could be putting together some really big time games games uh if they don't 
if they keep everything as clean as possible and uh yeah uh they're getting to basically that barrier where it's you know not feasibly possible to go any lower so we'll, mm -hmm. we'll see yeah it, um yeah well well said uh, and oats and goats actually getting very very good um RNG from the bugs, only really needing to do one farm session, got ended up with nine supers, so his super count is looking excellent going into uh, Lore Norfair here. Yeah, we've just had maybe about an hour over of attempts, and the best attempt so far was by the world record holder, and he got himself a 41 43. Three seconds slower than the actual record, so uh, it's incredibly impressive. I think uh, maybe one of these guys can actually beat the record today. We'll see. Yeah, not wasting any time on heating up the uh, the runs here, or, or like you said in the first hour, already getting a really really awesome run. All right, so here we have oats and goats. He has to uh, farm up some power bombs. Yeah, I think he he has to conserve some of his uh, ammo. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the missiles, but he's setting up for this shine spark. This is the lava spark. It's uh, incredibly important to nail this and save some time. And there it is. Yep. Um, basically, the reason that they have to do this, they don't have the, uh, the space jump item. They have not gone into Meridia. So uh, the best way to get into this entrance, the lower Norfair entrance, is to do a shine spark. But you, there's not enough room to do it in that room, so they have to do the shine spark charge and then damage boost to that specific point and spark up. Yeah, and not to mention, you know, not only is there not enough space, but actually, you know, you're with speed boost, you're in lava for whatever reason, you're actually unable to gain any speed. So um, that's why the damage boost uh, is so key because it's the fastest way to move through that lava other than a vertical shine spark um, with speed booster equipped. Okay, this room right here, we have not really mentioned it yeah. uh, very much. This is actually the worst room in the game. That was the room that Oats and Goats just went through. Any, the slightest mistake you make in that room, it just goes poorly for you. That's why it's the worst room in the game. And uh, it's, <laughs> usually you would have the screw attack. Uh, these guys aren't picking it up. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's tough luck if you make any sort of mistake in that room. Mm -hmm. It's very, very costly. Either, you know, you're either dead because you took damage or you got to like reset the room or it just it's just a huge time loss no matter how you slice it. So. So we'll see how these rooms go here for Oats with his with his health. Again, it's a little concerning here. It's going to. That was really, these, yeah. yeah, that was really ballsy, actually. It <laughs> see, was. So, so uh, base, you can get really lucky with those big side hoppers. We call them the Seagas. Um, they can jump high or they can jump low. And uh, if you're just going to run into that wasteland room like that, you want them to jump high. And uh, Oats and Goats gets lucky. He has an incredible amount of supers. He has the health. Oh, Everything's going so well for him right now. So again, just like we saw Zos do in that last run, we're going to see him farm some supers, or farm, excuse me, power bombs. Um, got a whole bunch of them there, hoping for that super, and does get it with a little bit of extra health there too from the uh, from those enemies. So he's just looking absolutely fantastic for a really, really great fight here. Actually missing one of the, the missiles that he meant to shoot. I think he wanted to hit three with them there. Yeah, hopefully he remembers. Uh, otherwise, he's on a... Oh, and he gets grabbed by Ridley. That's uh, going to cost him a little bit of time. Losing some health, um, but uh, once he gets Ridley into this pogo pattern, he should be able to manage. Okay, right, so he did... Yeah, that yeah. Um, if he didn't shoot that missile, he would have been uh, on an odd value of life for uh, Ridley, so definitely wanted to get that in. Yeah, because the missiles do 100 damage each, and he had three of them, so using all three would be that even 300 to, to knock out one charge shot that he would have had to do, so it's why it's important. He would have still needed to do one extra charge shot, have that uh, odd health value, as uh, JD mentioned. <clears throat>
All right, and not 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 too bad of a fight overall. Um, shaky shaky start there, but managed to recover it quite nicely. Yeah, we'll see uh, what his pace is like uh, leaving mid lane, but uh, based on like Oats Oats's splits, like he has like one of the most insane <laughs> one of the most insane early games uh in his run so it's gonna be hard to save time there but if he can just keep up this pace all the way into meridia and into the end game he can definitely uh maybe cut into his pb at the very least yeah oats and goats is a very early game focused player um you know if you ever watch uh any of his speed runs on his uh on his channel when he's doing uh, any percent he, there's a lot of early resets um you know and there's and there's merits to that that kind of play and also disadvantages to you know there's there's no perfect way to do to do uh, runs for practice it's just different things that work for different people um and Oats and Ghost is a player who really likes to focus on getting a really really flawless early game so watching his early game is just absolutely insane um, but on that note, actually, I do want to um, mention that, you know, while we are seeing some really high quality play from these players, you know, we aren't going to be streaming this all day 24-7, but these players are, you know, always doing attempts and, and runs on their own channels. So I'll go ahead and put the links to their, uh, um, oh, okay, so someone's already got it for me. The links to each of these runners' channels, Behemoth, Zost, and Otsugo. So please make sure to give them a follow, you know, if this is at all intriguing to you, which you know, I don't know why it wouldn't be, because this is awesome. Excellent Three Musketeers from Oats and Goats, by the way, there. Um, yeah, make sure you follow these runners, because they're doing they're doing attempts all the time. Um, and so you can see more high-quality play from them uh, by following their channels. And again, also make sure you follow uh, this channel, twitch.tv slash speedgaming, and the subsequent other three channels, Speed Gaming's 2, 3, and 4. Um, there's always lots of awesome events going on, tournaments, showcases, stuff like this. Um, chase, chase for the record, uh, all sorts of great stuff happening all the time, seven days a week, um, on all four of those channels, so make sure you follow those as well. No shortage of speedrunning coming your way, so... Absolutely yeah, none. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, we have Oats and Goats, he's on his way out of, uh, of the Norfair area, he's gonna go into Crate, so it's always kind of funny to see Crate be done, uh, third in this boss order, but, uh, it is probably the most optimal way of doing this route. Um, he's gonna open that little area right there and do a little wall jump check. So as you go through these doors, you, there are some slight nuances about them. Yeah, you, I want to, um, yeah, go ahead. So the doors have to align uh, when you go through them. You might see it with this door. Uh, we got a good one there. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, basically, what happens is when the, when the screen blacks out and there's only the door, sometimes it has to center itself, and uh, that actually costs more time than uh, you want. And these some some of these for some of the doors, the players might be jumping through them, and you might be thinking, "Well, that seems a little bit slow," but if that's actually to center the door so that the uh, the game doesn't do it for them, and uh, that saves just a little bit of time. We're gonna see a quick kill here. Oh, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a missed quick kill, <laughs> and that's uh, uh, an unfortunate attempt for Oats, and he's just going to reset it. So uh, basically, to explain the quick kill, uh, sort of sidetracked on the doors, but to explain the quick kill, you want to shoot two missiles into uh, into Kraid's mouth, and then Kraid's going to open his mouth uh, ever so slightly, and you want to stun him with a super missile as it's just... Uh, as he just barely gets it open and that's going to stun his mouth open and you're going to shoot the rest of the super missiles into his mouth and finish him off before he goes into his second phase where he grows uh very tall into the room but uh looks like we have a little bit of a lull uh in the attempts we have zosti i think taking a little bit of a break it looks like goats might be starting up another attempt soon but we do have behemoth he is chugging right along uh, as i was explaining with the doors you can also go through the doors a little bit quicker if you do a wall jump check so in super metroid you can wall jump up the walls but if you try to do it through an open door that actually uh 
shortens the amount of pixels that you need to cover going through that door. So it just shortens the distance. All those little things, they, they're just uh, little frame savers and they, they uh, help make the speed run go a little bit faster. Yeah, there's just so many little things. We could just go on and on about all the little tiny, tiny frame savers here and there. You know, one we haven't mentioned at all uh, is the arm pumping um, that I'm sure you've been seeing <clears throat> these guys do and it's probably arguably the smallest time saver in the entire run um over the course of the run saving maybe you know a couple a handful of seconds at the very most um basically when you're seeing the uh, these players wiggle their arm cannons up and down right now you can see oats and goats doing it as he's going through these rooms here um every single time that arm cannon changes positioning it shifts samus forward one pixel while she's running um so when it goes diagonal up, back to neutral, or from diagonal down to diagonal up, or whatever, it, whenever it changes, it shifts forward one pixel. Um, and so you have to arm pump multiple times to actually end up saving just one frame. So multiple arm pumps equate to just one frame, so you can just kind of get an idea of how many arm pumps you would need to be actually be saving a second, even. So it's quite, quite a large amount. So, But that's just something really easy that you can do on like any kind of straightaway or, or whatever. Again, you're going to see Behemoth. Uh, these players have enabled the moonwalk. So Behemoth's right here. He's going to do a little moonwalk right there and right off the edge. And it's going to accelerate him uh, as he goes downwards. That one's a little bit harder. He has to like weave in between those platforms. Actually, incredibly impressive to see him do that uh, consistently as he does. And then this old mother brain room, uh, if you we like to call that area with the pits, and uh, if you can get through there without falling through any of the pits, we call it the pitless. And uh, it's, it's nice time savings if you can just do it all the time but it's not it's not easy <laughs> nothing is easy in super metroid so nope <laughs> uh that's sort of a the love hate relationship when you speed run it we see zos there uh claiming that the world record is incoming he is so. guaranteeing world record Let, let's see it <laughs> just doing a little uh, bit of practice there with his uh, moat crossing strategies to both the double bomb jump and the uh, cwj yeah those are pretty crucial uh if you want to get any of these these any percent runs uh, off of the ground you need to make sure you can get past that moat you know first try pretty much All right, so, so we see Behemoth. He's coming into the old Mother Brain room, and now it's filled with enemies, so he has to make sure he clears out all of the enemies, or else that door at the end is going to be locked. So he uh, unlocks the door, and then he's going to do some ledge grabbing. Uh, you see Zos and Oats, they actually do a wall, uh, wall jump climb throughout the shaft, but you can actually just ledge grab up through the middle, and make sure you open the door. Really, really well done. And he's, yeah. Uh, on pretty good pace to get uh, maybe uh, a 444 bombs at the very least. And again, uh, I just wanted to mention that my name is Justin Fend. I am here with Wild Anaconda. We are your commentators today for Chase for the Record. As we see Behemoth again, a 442. Wow. That's uh, yeah. very impressive. And uh, I would not expect anything less from the world record holder. Yeah, and thank you all for being uh, with us here today. Those of you who are regulars to the Speed Gaming channel, those of you who are new to the Speed Gaming channel, coming from the front page or however you found out about us, thank you very much for being here. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, and we hope that you guys stick around. Yeah, you may have heard of Super Metroid speedrunning throughout uh, many other events. And uh, you might find out today why it's so polarizing why it's you know people can't stop talking about it or whatever because uh the way that these guys move throughout the game they're doing it uh just almost like a computer it's like it's mesmerizing to watch almost it is it's a very technically impressive game just seeing the movement Personally, my favorite uh, movement sections to do myself and to watch other players perform is any sort of vertical ascension. Um, so, you know, areas like that uh, large vertical room in, in the start of Norfair, 
um, or in Lore Norfair coming out of uh, after Ridley with all those heads on the side of the walls that shoot the fireballs at you. Rooms like that um, where you go up really, really quickly are just really impressive to watch and to and really fun to do yourself. Ooh, okay, so unfortunately... Ooh, that's not good. Yeah, uh, Behemoth's losing some time, oh. and uh, I think that's a reset. He yeah. was on a really good start there. Unfortunately, um, because he took some damage from one of those enemies, it affects the drop rate. So if you have full health, you're more likely to get ammo when you, when you need it. But if you don't have full health, you pretty much uh, get uh, some likelihood of uh, getting health drops, which is not what you want there. You need five missiles to open that door to get to the early supers. And that's why you see, you know, that's another... The reason that has to happen is because you see, you'll see Oats and Goats right now shooting these pirates. And again, we mentioned that was to save uh, health for this next uh, game, the, the next part of the game coming up, because the wreck ship area is a very dangerous area. A lot of the enemies are going to be doing, for, you know, particularly Fantoon, the boss, taking, you know, a hit from him or his flames will do 40 points of damage. And so you want two missiles going, you want one drop, one missile drop from those pirates to get two missiles here to then shoot uh, one missile and then two beam shots to kill these two um, enemies right here. And like JD said, with full health, you're pretty much guaranteed to get your two missile drops, which will be another four missiles to put you at the five, which, you know, gets you through the score. So it's all calculated. And especially that uh, little that mock ball that they do. So uh, another thing we haven't really touched on is uh, this ability that you can do where you maintain your, your run speed in morph ball form. So basically right there uh, to get the early supers, these guys need to morph and go and roll under these gates, but you have to do it with run speed. So basically they're running right before that door, jumping through it and then uh, executing pretty much like a, a down and down forward motion before they hit the ground and that gives them the mock ball and that gets them underneath the gates and getting the early supers so that they these runners don't have to fight the spore spawn our boy spore spawn <laughs> left in the dust it's kind of like a uh, hadouken style uh deep d-pad press to do the um the mock ball there A really, really useful bit of uh, tech there, and a nice, uh, we call that trick up and two that Oats and Ghost just did. Um, the frame perfect to jump at the very edge of that platform after picking up the charge beam allows you to uh, get up out of that area with two wall jumps instead of three. Fun little, fun little trick there. So I believe we are slated for uh, three whole hours on the chase for the record here. We started at 1.30, and I think we are going uh, up until 4.30. But uh, if you guys want to see more world record attempts, you should follow these runners. We had Zosti, Oats and Goats, and Behemoth, the current world record holder. So uh, they're doing uh, attempts uh, off and on throughout the week. So. I know Oats and Goats, he likes to stream uh, almost every night, so he's always, he's always working on it. And you pretty much have to because uh, uh, I don't think this record is going to stand. I think these guys are, I think maybe even Behemoth might uh, improve it sooner or later. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and, and you know, these players, it's, it's kind of nice because they just from what I've seen, they, they're, they're not that this is necessarily coordinated at all, but their stream times seem to be a little bit staggered. So, you know, like, like you said, Oats and Goats is like late at night for, you know, the American times. Behemoth is actually um, in Europe, so he streams at a little bit more of a Europe friendly time. Um, for those of you who might also be in the uh, Europe time zones. Um, and then Zos sometimes streams in the, the morning ish. So you've got, you've got high quality Super Metroid speedruns for any time of day.
All right, so right here we have Oats. He's setting up the horizontal bomb jump. He falls into the water. That's going to cost him some time. Uh, you do not want to fall into that water. You see how slow you are because they don't have the gravity suit. But he sets himself up for, up for a CWJ. We call that the continuous wall jump. And uh, there are various setups for doing that. It's not He's not just doing it blindly. He's actually, you know, making sure he had the right distance in the doorway and then uh, getting the right jump and then uh, just nailing that wall jump off of the pedestal and he's and now, in the wreck ship. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe his setup, if you set up this continuous wall jump from within the room, there's actually two pixels in which you can start your CWJ on. I think he actually started on the pixel farther forward, so it's not a one frame jump into two frame jump, but he actually made it a one frame jump into a one frame jump. Um, so he actually he made it a little bit more difficult for himself, and you do need to hit both of those jumps in succession, otherwise it will not work. So it's always going to be single frame that you have that first jump on, and then the second uh, the second jump off of the pedestal there can either be two or one frame, and I believe he set it up as the one frame there. <clears throat> yeah, this so is just making not... it that more impressive. <laughs> yeah, this is not Mario Brothers One or any other NES game of your choice. This is Super Metroid. We've got one frame jumps. It's it's crazy. <laughs> Unfortunately, Oats getting a slow pattern there from uh, from Fantoon and uh, not getting the Doppler as well. This is shaping up to be a reset, it looks like. But, uh, we'll see if he, he wants to continue on. Um, yeah, it looks like he just wanted to it shoot. Looks his... like he, he <laughs> actually went for the uh, the a new kind of a new strat that was found. Well, it's been found a while ago but no one really understood it until recently um there's actually a single frame where after you hit fantoon with a missile in that first part of the stage you can actually hit him with a super and he won't enrage and he'll stay on screen so it looked like he actually tried to uh recover it there a little bit by doing that strat there but one thing we haven't really talked about is the, the doppler strat and jd do you want to kind of talk about uh how that works or oh uh, sure i can touch on it a little bit so okay um before in the old route, we would actually use the um, the wave beam, you know, power bomb combo to deal damage to Fantoon. He has uh, 2,500 health. He has 2,500 health. Uh, but in this run, we have to use missiles to deal damage to Fantoon, and uh, it's very complex the way it works in his phases. Uh, basically, each missile does 100 damage worth and the super missile will do 600 600 worth of damage to fantoon but if you use the super missile it puts him in, in that rage state so the runners uh as we see zosti falling into the water uh, and the runners want to finish off fantoon with the uh the super missile and before they do that they want to chain uh their their missile shots into Fantoon. So basically, when Fantoon is vulnerable, they're going to shoot two missiles into his eyeball. And then shortly after waiting a brief period, they're going to shoot another two missiles. And that's going to leave Fantoon uh, active throughout the fight. And when he comes back onto the screen, they're going to shoot as many missiles as they can. So four missiles plus whatever they can get uh, hopefully six. So what they're trying to do is they're gonna try. They're trying to chain at least six missiles into Fantoon, and they do that by moving forward and shooting missiles uh, at a certain rate. You don't want to like mash too slowly on the missile fire firing because like it's not gonna chain together. So. If you can keep it consistent as you move forward, you're going to get all of those missile hits to go into Fantoon. And then in the second, they do it in the second round, but they finish it off with the super missile. Sorry for the le lengthy explanation. Mm. It's, um, that was good. It was good. It's, it's a very hard thing to explain, uh, but it's pretty much needed for this uh, sort of speed run for the, the world record <laughs> attempts because uh, these guys need a good Fantoon fight if they want to get uh, a 41 or lower. Yep. And for uh, for those of you who are like me and like numbers, <clears throat> um, just a couple of numbers on the Doppler. The, the cooldown for shooting a missile is 10 frames. And so 
uh, or t ten or nine or ten. It's 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 a very small amount of time, and so in order to uh, accurately hit your your missiles pretty much every single time that right when the cooldown comes off it's somewhere around 350 beats per minute um and so what you want to be doing is hitting fantoon pretty much with a decreasing amount of time between each missile connection but with him uh, with the missile in his hitbox and so the way that's done is you know keeping that same uh uh shooting the missiles as soon as the cooldown goes off and also decreasing the amount of space that the missile has to travel that's why you're moving towards him and so you can also you might also see players you know kind of stutter their movement where they're moving forward and then kind of stopping and just doing that over and over and over and that even allows for more missiles to be uh to pumped into uh fantoon um before he uh before you run out of space all right enough of the the speed lingo yeah <laughs> let's let, let, let's talk money Oh, oh no, no. I, I like money talk. Let's let's talk money. Right. Let's hear it, JD. Yeah. So, if these guys get a personal best, if they beat their best time in this speed run uh, during Chase for the record, they're gonna get a one hundred dollar payout. Okay. What? Hundred dollars, dude. Uh, sign me up. Yeah, I'm down. Um, however, if any of these runners by the end of the event get the world record. They're gonna get ten times that amount. They're gonna get one grand for getting the world record, and they have to maintain. If someone beats the world record and then the other guy beats it after him, they're not getting that money. You gotta beat it again, guys. So, in the final two hours of this event, these guys are trying to get it. They're gonna try and get uh, PB whatever they can, and uh, there's money on the line. So hopefully they can do it. And if you can imagine already the stress and the nerves feeling, you know, in those last, those final moments of a speed run when you're on, you know, PB or world record pace. Now add the fact that there is money on the line there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just make it that much more intense. So this is a really good uh, beginning for Behemoth. If you can hit this elevator going into Brinstar, like under six minutes and 10 seconds, you have a good start. So hopefully Behemoth, um, he doesn't make that same mistake taking the damage here in the beginning. He wants these missiles to open the door. And really it's a very, uncommon mistake like you know things like that are gonna happen you know you're with the sheer amount of attempts and the amount of time that these players play this game little things like that are gonna happen that that particular mistake that behemoth made is a really uncommon one so it's not really it's you're not gonna see it very often so um unfortunate that it happened that last time but yeah he's he's uh looking good now but yeah very like like you said very excellent uh early game here yeah, when you watch uh, when you watch these guys do as many attempts uh, as as they have, you can sort of tell sort of like the time, sort of, sort of <clears throat> the spots like in their timer, like when they get this, when they get that, and uh, getting getting the the certain elevator times is really good. Uh, they, these guys are good enough to get power bombs under like eight minutes and forty seconds most of the time. So that's what can, what they're going to be aiming for. As we see, Zost is taking on the bomb Terezo in his next attempt. Uh, Behemoth just grabbed himself the charge beam, and we have oats and goats going up the criteria shaft. Yeah, and so you can kind of uh, just oppose the two different climb techniques. Um, JD pointed out Behemoth's climb where he, you know, used the ledge grabs all the way up, and we mentioned that Oats and Zost um, both do the uh, that wall jump climb up the side there, where you're also killing the enemies along the way. So you can kind of see the two there, the two different versions of that. Yeah, there's a bit of ammo management there as Behemoth exits uh, that area we call the Green Hills. Um, he, he wants to farm these two enemies. Ooh, he's gonna have a, a little bit of a slow. He's, can't, he's ah. trying to get this the spin jump up this uh, red tower, but he wants to farm those two enemies. These um, these big pods uh, in that Green Hills area, and those almost always guarantee a super missile drop. And one thing, another farm strat that you saw Behemoth try and do there is you um, 
he he hit with the charge shot one of those enemies. His his uh, intent was to hit both of them with the same charge with the same charge shot and get uh, two drops there, but unfortunately missed it. It's a little bit of a tight uh, window there to get both of them hit, but you know one one will suffice. Uh, that area where Behemoth just exited is actually really precarious because um, you see these little green caterpillars. Those guys do a ton of damage to you when you don't have the various suit or anything. With just a power suit on, you need to make sure you avoid those caterpillars and you need to like shoot out these blocks properly. But uh, Behemoth's got a pretty decent start right now. He's going to try and get himself out of that uh, elevator room and um, get himself to the moat, see if he can get into the, the wreck ship. And so one thing you'll see Behemoth not really ever attempt is to CWJ. Like you saw, he started farther back. He didn't press himself right up against the door. That's kind of the standard setup. If you're gonna if you're gonna go for the CWJ, the continuous wall jump, um, you press yourself right up against the door, and it sets you up perfectly for the um, for the first jump. However, Behemoth just doesn't go for it. Um, you're really only losing like at tops, like one second really or less, um, by going for the uh, the double bomb jump straight off the bat so it's not a huge time loss it, it's a lot more easy uh it's a lot easier to get the double bomb jump that you saw behemoth do consistent over um the continuous wall jump so you will you know you do kind of see things like that where you know the top players will they they just make a judgment call like am is it worth it for me to go for this strat that is just a little bit faster but is it worth my entire run ending if i miss it you know, and so they just make a judgment call like, do I do I want to do that or do I want to just go for something just slightly slower but get more runs going? And so what uh, we see Behemoth here at Fantoon, see what kind of luck he gets here. Unfortunately, not a fast pattern there. Hoping yeah. for a mid maybe? Nope. Yeah, so that that's a bad sign. We, in the all of these guys is uh, in their personal best. Ooh, okay. Oh. Taking a little bit of damage. Just trying to get yeah. that doppel. Um, <clears throat> in all of these guys' personal bests, they uh, they do not get slow patterns. They get either fast or mid patterns, and it uh, looks like Behemoth uh, not having a good go of uh, that boss fight right there. Yeah, you know, it, like in all of their, their personal bests, they're all getting either the best or the second best uh, set of patterns. Um, you know, and uh, basically to give you a little bit of an idea of the difference between the um, the speed of the patterns, just, there's nothing that you can do to manipulate the patterns in uh, in real time. So, you know, you're either going to get a fast emit or a slow. The difference between a fast pattern and a slow pattern is about 10 seconds. Um, so, you know, if you, as opposed to getting two two fast patterns and two slow patterns, you're losing around 20 seconds at, at absolutely nothing that you could have done. Um, nice CWJ there from Zost. He's making it across the moat, you know, around 9 minutes, 32, 33 seconds. So it's a really, really nice uh, pace for him so far. <clears throat> As Oats and Ghost going in to um, get his power bombs at just about 8.39. So you, you see, like, some different strats there. <clears throat> Again, we talk about Behemoth doing like the ledge grab climb, and uh, he Behemoth actually drops like a power bomb right there to break all of these blocks. So um, yeah, just uh, it's different ways to play the game, and it's, it makes for very you know it, a really cool community of just speedrunners just doing different things, trying to go as fast as they can. Exactly, and it just it just keeps things you know fresh, right? So like you know you've got all the top players doing the the. the doing their doing their thing getting really great runs but you know there's even just a little bit of variance that, that makes you know their runs unique and we are seeing a fast pattern here for zos out of fanchun his health he's, uh, yeah he's got to be careful he can't take another hit really nice though doppler there i think he got like seven uh, seven missiles in there um likely gonna get a mid pattern here he needs some more missiles though he does get a mid oh end it wall this is yeah, so see, he, he didn't get the missiles that he needed because he was getting health drops because he was in a what we call health bomb range. Um, so when you're when you're uh, below you know, like 30 health, you're gonna, everything that you kill has a very high percent chance to drop you health. So still not a bad fight. He ended up getting a fast there on this third pattern. So that's probably why he's going to be only continuing. The only reason he's continuing here is because he got that fast pattern. 
Um, so it was a fast mid slow, uh, fast mid fast, excuse me. Yeah, this is actually a pretty decent uh, kill time for Zoz, so it looks like he's going to continue on, see what he can make of it. Uh, I was corrected, uh, because Behemoth does not have the angle down, um, I think Zoz and Oats, they, uh, I think they may have similar uh, button configurations, I'm not too sure, do you know? Uh, I can look it up real quick, um, but I <laughs> but think... I think they I think they're off by like a button. I'm not sure. Let me... At the at the very least, uh we know that they, Behemoth the... yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, we at the very least we know that Behemoth does not use angle down, which is one of the shoulder buttons. He actually maps that to uh, I think item cancel. So because he does not have the item down uh, uh, mapped, he lays that power bomb in the in the early wreck ship area before fighting Phantom. Okay, so it looks like they have uh, item select and shoot swapped. Uh, Zost and Oats and Goats. Yeah, that's just like a testament to, you know, the, I guess, flexibility of the game. You can just, whatever you feel comfortable with, uh, because you have to use all of these buttons on the controller. Yep. Like, <laughs> make no mistake, you're using everything. So, um,. Yeah, it's uh, it's very it's what makes Super Metro unique. Uh, I think it's just you can do it however you like, and uh, you see a lot of different styles. We're gonna see Zos. He has to. Um, he's doing a little bit of a damage boost there uh, in those spikes, and those spikes do 60 each. So he has to make sure he has uh, he has over like 120 health when he comes into this room. We call this the Bowling Torizo. So he does a few little small de-boosts and then he jumps right into the, the hands as you see uh, this little uh, approach by this uh, Torizo. He's doing a little bowling step up there. <laughs> and strike. So, um, yeah. I think Zos is behind on his splits. I, it's it's really hard for Zos to beat this gravity suit split because he has like an incredible, incredible like early game. But um, yeah, he'll continue on and hopefully uh, he can keep this run going. And in a second here, when those uh, when those split times pop up. Um, we'll be able to see, you know, exactly how far um, behind he what that uh, Bantoon fight put him. So there, yeah, there it is. You, you can see, yeah, um, that you know, versus the world record, he's only five seconds behind at Gravity Suit. Um, even with that fight, you know, so it that just goes to show like how solid his early game was compared to again the, the in Behemoth's world record, the forty-one forty that he set um, earlier this month. His early game was, you know, wasn't anything to really look twice at. Uh, it wasn't. There was nothing. It, it was good, of course, but you know, it wasn't as optimal as it could be. And so, you know, you'll, you might be seeing, you know, a lot of players much closer to world record at you know the gravity suit than. Um, than they will be potentially later on in the run. So this is the first beam upgrade that uh, Zeus is going to get. It's the Spacer Beam. And uh, it used to be, <laughs> we used to actually skip this item in the old route. Uh, we used to just cut it out and just use the Plasma Beam. So uh, Spacer's back. We need the spacer beam to do a little extra damage on these boss fights because uh, without it, it's gonna take a little bit of extra time. So, and these boss fights are hard. So, we, we need we need a little firepower to uh, to shorten it. And with the beams that we have, spacer pretty much doubles the amount of damage that we're doing with our charge shots. Um, just just a little bit under that, you know. With it, 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 but it it it's basically doubles the amount of time. So that would that would effectively, if you didn't get it, um, double the amount of shots that you would need to do from 60 to 120 on you know Mother Brain and and uh, Ridley the Ridley fight. So it's it's imperative that you uh, that you grab that. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks like Behemoth and uh, Oats and Goats both getting their runs started, but we have Zost here. He is uh, at least right, into you, Norfair. You yeah, he meant to do a bit down back there, so uh, maybe you want to explain what down backing is. Well, yeah, so down backing is a, is a really cool piece of movement um, that you can do. It's and it's a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit counterintuitive when you're actually trying to do it, but it's called a down back because when you're falling, if you press down and then hold down and then also hold back, which is back relative to whichever direction Samus is facing, um, you'll be able to continue moving in the forward trajectory, whichever direction that is, um, while you're aiming down in the, with the Samus's hitbox is actually, uh, her gun is pointed down. Sorry, I'm a little, little scattered there, but her hitbox, her, her gun is pointing down. And in that, um, animation or that sprite state is actually the smallest hitbox that Samus can have outside of being in the morph ball. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so what that allows um, for you to do is you can actually skip some platforms that you might not otherwise be able to get past, but because of having that extra, that little bit of extra um, room with a smaller hitbox, um, you know, either above or below your your sprite. So it's a really cool piece of movement. And so what's what's a little counterintuitive about it is you have to hold away from the direction that you actually want to be traveling. Um, so it's a little bit tricky to figure out, but it's a really really useful piece of movement uh, tech that you can that you can learn, and it's used all over the run. Yeah, you wouldn't think like that would work that way, but it, 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 that's how 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 it goes in Super Metroid. And uh, yeah, we're, we're using it in the speedrun. It, it helps quite a bit. Uh, looks like Zost is gonna do this right side uh, bubble mountain climb again. Looks like he has to do a backup strat there. I'm trying to think of the next time we're gonna be seeing a down back. Um, the, the, the time, the only time I can. Think of right now would be in Lore Norfair, um, just coming after the amphitheater, and I can point it out there. Um, but again, if there's another one in the future, I can I can show you guys. But it, it, they're, they're used all over the place, and it's you know to skip platforms uh, that you normally wouldn't be able to get to because your hitbox is too large. So, Zos ammo right now, not looking great. It's it's pretty par for the course for this part of the run, but you know, obviously, we want to see a bunch of super drops. Okay, so getting three, four in three rounds of farming, that's that's pretty good. Um, I believe you mentioned it before, JD, that uh, in the world record run, Behemoth farmed only two times. So farming that extra one time, you know, maybe it's around a second, but you know, getting that extra super can be worth it. But you, it's again, it's just kind of a judgment call thing. How many times do you want to farm? Um, how much extra time are you going to spend to, you know, get those not necessarily guaranteed super missile drops? Yeah, and you saw those. He skipped over those missiles right before the wave beam. Again, you only need so many items to beat the game. So um, he doesn't need any extra missile uh, going forward. So he's just going to skip over them. And, you know, when you pick up those items, the fanfare is about like seven seconds. So that's yep. seven seconds that he's, uh, he's gaining. This area is a little bit slow, but thanks to that little D boost, you can make it a little bit faster and then you just need to make sure you weave in between these little uh these little uh cliff sides <laughs> and through this lava area he's gonna farm up for uh some power bombs from these violas and then set himself up for the lava spark looking good oh he didn't get the d boost and that's actually very bad that he now just took okay i that took three hits that's 150 damage they just took and now it's gonna take even more doing this gravity jump here it's gonna be at you know like 54 health going into lower norfair i guess he wants to keep this run going though um <clears throat> excuse me i don't think he has enough health for that uh for the fast pillars <laughs> he does not no he's not so he's gonna need to use more power bombs here um he's gonna need to watch his power bomb count but he should be fine just so long as he's uh aware of it um and he's gonna be need to be doing more um as long as you, if you have four or five power bombs going into this area, you're fine on uh, power bomb management. You're gonna you're gonna have all the power bombs that you need. 
So he's charging. I, Maybe yeah, he's gonna. He... I don't know what he's doing. Okay. Oh, he's. Oh, the, oh, beautiful. The, the swag. Let's go. <laughs> the, the swag. The swag. <laughs> he's he's pretty much almost dead, but uh, he's he's creative. <laughs> For the fans. <clears throat> For, the fans. For the fans. All right, nice. Uh, first part of the worship in the game. He's gonna morph right over that pirate. There he goes. <laughs> oh, ball over the head. That's what we call that strat. It's like very close. You're like so close to touching that guy, but uh, he's trying to keep this run alive. Unfortunately, uh, as far as time goes, it's probably way behind, but uh, you know, it's very exciting to see him uh, survive. So he's going to be getting some health drops here from these key enters. Definitely, what, he got a too small, are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> oh my God. Wow, two small health drops even, not even uh, large ones. Mm. If he had gotten two large ones there, he would have been able to take a hit from the Diskigas in here just in case, but now he's, he's still in danger of death. W hitting, getting hit by anything. He's not gonna be able to Kago through the uh, platforms, or Kago is just a term we, we use to uh, talk about clipping through these platforms here, going through them. Yeah, you can see how much time you lose here because um, you have to wait for these platforms to descend and uh, just waiting around. Is and even more so, there. even more so here is he's going to get only health from this this first pirate instead of the super drops that he wants for Ridley. So it's just like constant, constant time loss after time loss just because of the low health. Just, you know, you're not able to do the fastest strats. You're not getting great drop uh, health. You're getting only health. And when you want supers for the Ridley fight, like it's just... It's just stacking one on top of the other yeah when it rains it, it pours and uh yeah <laughs> super metroid is very unkind but uh so he wants six. he he wants to take on ridley so uh, yeah i i don't disagree with keeping this run alive i mean it's not it's probably not a world record pace but you know anything to get your confidence up in these attempts because uh there's, we've got some money on the line. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And at this point, you know, it might just be for practice, you know, keeping this run going. Absolutely. Um, yeah. but, and and because it's, it's never a bad thing, you know, to take a run, just do a no reset, keep it going all the way to completion or, you know, a death or, or whatever happens. Um, it's, it's always good to, to have that uh, extra practice run in there. Yeah. So for, one, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, for the, those who do not know, we earlier today we saw Behemoth almost beat his record run. He got himself a 41-43, and that's the best time. That's that's the only completed run uh, through throughout this event and chase for the record. So uh, well, it's actually been these a, guys can. It's the second best time ever completed in the world ever. So no, no <laughs> yeah. So he he has the top two times Behemoth. Um, yeah. Yeah, so these guys can do it. Um, I, I have complete faith in them, but um, yes, it's gonna it's gonna take quite a few attempts. Uh, we're only gonna be on until 4:30, but these guys are uh, they're always they're always doing speed runs, and uh, yeah, you should give them a follow. It'll be one action-packed hour left of time that we've got here. But yeah, make sure you follow those runners, all Behemoth Oats and Zost, you know, to, to to keep up with the. Uh, the high tier play that they've got going on. I can get those links for their channels in the chat right here for you guys so you can make sure and follow them. Um, there's something I was going to say and it has slipped my mind. I can't remember. But, uh, oh, I remember. <clears throat> Another uh, small thing. So we, we've, we've mentioned Moonwalk a couple of times. How, you know, you can um, use it to have pretty much an uncapped falling, ver vertical falling speed um, that you, you know, you've seen multiple times, like in the climb, that first area of the game where they're, um, you're just falling really, really fast. You go so fast that they're going through platforms. Um, but when that was implemented, there's actually a couple of fights that needed to be, players needed to change the way they approach the fights. Um, because the moonwalk, uh, was affecting their fight. That key hunter just in the way, just camping that pad, Zost had to take a hit unfortunately um but what you'll notice is you know if you're holding shot and you turn around um the you will start to moonwalk 
Um, there's some other, like, there's some situations where, like, if you're running and you turn around, it won't actually do that. But if you're standing still, you'll start to, to, to walk backwards. But during the Ridley fight, what you saw is Zost would, you know, manipulate his position by just walking backwards. But if he needed to turn around, he would actually crouch and oh, miss. Okay. All right. So Zost well done. Made it <laughs> well done. Yeah, he made it past that second key hunter that's gotten him twice already. So well done by him. But yeah, so just to 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 be able to turn around while holding a charge shot, um, you know, players have had to change some fights, uh, namely the Dragon and the Ridley fights, change the way they approach it a little bit to um, be able to keep the Moonwalk on. And so what you'll see some players doing to, is uh, crouching and then turning around while they're holding a the shot because that won't initiate the uh, the uh, Moonwalking. Yeah, it, it ever so slightly changed a lot, a lot of the, the boss fights and uh, some of the mini boss fights as well. But um, these guys have adapted to it and uh, they have implemented it into their runs. So that's that's part of the norm now <laughs> to use the moonwalk. It, it's very yep. silly, but uh, you know that extra little time that they save is um, well worth it. We're gonna see if uh, Oats can get himself past, if he can get past the uh, the water section here. That we call the moat. As Zost is gonna enter the uh, the crates layer. Needing to farm those enemies because his missile count was very very low, only having one missile and three supers. He's gonna need to use a little bit of ammo here um, to kill these enemies and go quickly, um, and also still have enough ammo to uh, do the crate quick kill. But Oats uh, getting across the moat really well, nicely done there. Yeah, Oats has. Uh, his, wow. He has mentioned that. Um, what? Hello. Nice little uh, ball strat there from Zeus. I know. It's crazy. Um, but Oats has mentioned to us that um, he's not really getting very lucky on these fantoon fights. So um, if he gets himself uh, some, uh, if he gets himself a good boss fight here. He'll be very happy, and I, I think he, he can get himself uh, going on this on this speed run. So super count decent, not definitely not where Zost wants it to be, but it's it's also not you know awful. I think more concerning is this missile count because yeah. uh, he's gonna he's gonna use these missiles I think on these pirates. Oh, okay, he uses a charge shot, so he's got one left. But um, I think definitely you would want him to have more. That's a good seven. Not the not the best Fantoon fight here. Again, still giving him slow patterns. Um, to start getting a, another slow right there. Uh, also, really low health, not a whole lot of missiles. Oh man, this is sometimes Fantoon just goes like this, and you know it's it's just un really unfortunate. Yeah. Um, not an easy fight by any means. <laughs> just just one of those days, you know. Um, yep. Fantoon. Some some days, Fantoon's. You know, he'll give you the 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 luck that you need, and other days it's just. Slow pattern after slow pattern, and that's the uh, that's the life of some Metroid speedrunning right now. <laughs> yep. But in any case, um, you can see there on the pace, the, um, the the splits have been updated for Zeus, and you can see just how much time he lost uh, in Lower Norfair, just from not having that life that he needed to do the shine sparks and all of that but at any rate he is uh he's moving forward with the speed run and hopefully he can finish this one out well uh, there's that hitbox we were talking about with Batwoon. <laughs> where where is it it's, it's somewhere i, I don't know dude it might be attached to his head i don't know <laughs> maybe it's his tail who knows it's 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 moving around you, you never you never know um, but yeah, we mentioned before that hitbox uh, is supposed to be Vatoon's head, but uh, his he has he's made up of a bunch of small hitboxes, and so the hitbox with um, not really is Zos going to get the uh, and refill? He is <laughs> just using a bunch of missiles going to uh, for the fans here checking out the ohms, the these little green guys. Yeah, this is. 
missile refill only ever seen in a 100% uh, map speed run. Can't actually bomb jump over. You can actually just jump and aim down, and then you'll end up clipping through these guys. So, uh, Zos making this a little bit more difficult on himself. Yeah, you, you don't normally see these enemies. <laughs> uh, it's always, and I believe they're only here in this section. Is that correct? That is correct. It's the only place that you will see these enemies in Super Metroid. And it's all, all for that, uh, that missile reload. <laughs> mm -hmm. See if he can get uh, over under Spark. I misses the charge entirely. Yeah, for those of you who uh, are unfamiliar with 100% map speed run, really awesome run with a lot of really cool strats in it. Yeah, so normally in this area we call the Coliseum that Zos is in, uh, you want to get the Shine Spark, and uh, it used to be that you could only... <laughs> it used to be that the norm was to Shine Spark halfway through that room, but if you do the wall jumps like as fast as you can, uh, as cleanly as possible, you can actually jump up and Shine Spark throughout the whole room, and we call it the full halfy, and uh, you can see how slow the room is without doing that shine spark. Uh, you just have to do a lot of very, um, very slow movement, just avoiding the spikes and the sand at the bottom. It's just not a good time. Really nice scope under there from Zost. Unfortunately, no supers, um, but using you know, a charge shot and what ammo he has to get a really nice two rounds still. Excellently done. Deciding to bomb jump out of uh, Dragon's room, not going for the um, for the spike suit there. And you're going to see who's going to charge it there. And uh, with the we, we mentioned, you know, with the spike suit, it saves a little bit of time because you're actually able to run for that duration because if you're actually running with the blue suit, you'll lose it. Um, so you, it just saves a very minor amount of time. So, you know, and if you mess up trying to get the spike suit, you can actually lose your blue suit altogether um, and not get spike suit and just be screwed out of any fast way of getting through that room. So, you know, it's an understandable uh, sacrifice that, uh, or, or risk, I guess I should say, um, that uh, Zos is deciding not to, not to do. Um, now that he's got all bosses down, he will be heading into Turian. As we see Behemoth coming up to the uh, the moat again, we're going to get the, uh, the double bomb jump coming out from him. He has gotten pretty consistent here, so we should see him just make it across. No problemo. Realizing that he actually did not quite get the right setup for the bomb jump. I guess, uh, you know... Commentator's curse and whatnot. Uh, sorry, Behemoth. <laughs> Going for the uh, the backup CWJ, deciding to abandon the run here. As we have Oats now going into the Bomb Chorizo fight, and Zos just heading back up into Criteria now. The, uh, upper section of the of the game and so something we haven't really talked about the bomb trees of fight at all you want to stagger the drops from bomb trees so that you don't uh, pick up all of the missiles at once you want to pick up just you know two of them uh, two missile drops and then uh, save the rest of them to pick up afterwards um, and then that allows you to only need to farm once uh, with his drops instead of having to wait for another farm session Yeah, that's a nice little strat there from Oats and Goats uh, as he exits the Terminator, just uh, just deselecting the missiles to kill, you know, killing off that one waiver, deselecting to open the door, and then uh, finishing off the, the last waiver with a missile. So he has full missiles coming into the area and then taking out a few of the pirates. It's 
Zos kind of teasing us here, waiting on his uh, validation of his run that is about two minutes behind. Uh, <laughs> not that it necessarily needs that validation. It's don't really have a, not really any sort of possible way to save two minutes in the uh, Turian, but. I'm deciding to just forego that altogether. Um. Yeah, these Metroid rooms in Turian, um, th there's a lot of luck involved with getting the drops that you need. I think he, yeah, I think he forgot to turn on his beams, actually. So you need to turn on ice and uh, and the spacer. Um, and then he's gonna freeze the first set, and then he's actually gonna group these Metroids. So he groups them really right well there, done. and one super will take all three of them out. Got really good drops from that room. He went in with two and two, and he's now at eight and eight. So it's really, really good drops. Like it's going into terrain with two missiles, two supers is kind of scary, but he's been getting really excellent drops, as you were saying. Um, you know, needing that ammo. He does need to leave with 15 missiles and 10 supers, though. However, yeah, he uh, needs all of it. He needs all of it. You can't if he has nine supers, it's no good. And so, so you saw him, you know, yeah, just taking no risks, finishing off the last uh, Metroids with just missiles and doing a nice deboost there. Um, off the Rinka, that circular red enemy, which does only 10 damage as opposed to just damage boosting through those blue side hopping enemies doing um, 30 damage. And the reason for that is once he gets the Metroid skip, he'll have a little bit of extra wiggle room in terms of damage that he can take uh, from Mother Brain before uh, guaranteed death if he dips below 301 as the scripted Rainbow Beam attack does 300 damage. Really nice Metroid skip there, though, from Zost. Yeah, that Metroid skip, basically, they're doing a little jump rope with the baby Metroid. They don't want to get grabbed, because when that Metroid grabs you, you have to go through this cutscene, and uh, you have to refill your health. The, the big Metroid will drain you of your life, and you have to go into the refill room. That all just takes time away. You don't want that, so you just skip the Metroid. And uh, I believe that was found by Cot Power, actually. <laughs> Swedish runner, and uh, we figured out how to pull off the um, the Metroid skip for uh, for for humans, pretty much. <laughs> it was definitely done by by the Taz for quite a while, by the tool assisted speed runs, but uh, we didn't really figure it out until a little bit later. And Taz doesn't even really do any jump roping. <laughs> it just runs. Yeah, it just goes, <laughs> it just leaves the room. It's like see ya. <laughs> yep. There are other alternative methods of doing the Metroid skip a little bit faster for humans too. So you can do uh, what's called a slope spark, which is essentially putting you into the same state as the spike suit, um, where you're per pretty much permanently in the uh, charged shine spark state and where you can run. Um, and you can do it in the uh, that Terminator room with that very first E tank that they pick up and then save it all the way for the Metroid. Um, tough to, to maintain it that entire time and also go fast, but that's another way that could speed up the Metroid skip for humans. So Zost here, 60 shot. Oh, wow. Okay, nearly getting hit by that onion ring there. That would have been bad as he would have gotten comboed by the rest of them and likely uh, been put into the death zone. Um, but again, 60 charge shots for him. At 45, when Mother Brain has three quarters of her health depleted, she will start doing the catch-up beam attack or just a red beam of a bunch of circles um, that will do 100 damage to you. Um, or more possibly. It is possible to get hit multiple times by the same beam, and it actually got despawned there uh, by that bomb exploding as well, but uh, Zost in that final phase now. Just only a handful of more charge shots to go until Mother Brain is dead. Oats and Goats here starting his Fantoon fight. Let's see what kind of uh, luck he gets from this. A really nicely done, though. Zero damage taken um, from that Mother Brain fight. So you can tell right away, like, if Fantoon doesn't open his eye, that's the, the, the pattern is, like, it's definitely much slower than what you Oats, want. Yeah, Oats is just having just a real rough Fantoon luck day today. Just getting, just, and that's another slow pattern for him. And not getting a fast there either. Wow, it's just really unlucky. Really, and, and there's just nothing that he can do about it. It's just luck, complete yeah. luck. And, you know, that's just the nature of the beast. Slow, slow here. Again, trying to go for that uh, that 
frame perfect super shot there where if you hit him on a very specific frame after hitting him with a missile he won't actually enrage and he will stay on screen trying to recover that um, but missing that unfortunately so at the very least uh, we're going to see Zoe finish out uh, his speed run not on world record pace but uh, I think um, I think it like it's good for him because it just shows that he can, you know, still, still do, still do the speed run, still finish the game. You know, sometimes you go d days of these attempts and you don't finish the game, and that's like, it's a really, it's really deflating feeling, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, and it's just yeah, like you're saying, it's good for like a morale boost. You know, just like making sure you just like finish, just getting a run done. You know, doing a no reset. Completing it all the way through. It's just it's just a good feeling to just Especially if, yeah, for a run this uh of this length, I think yep. it's I think it's good. Um, yeah. But uh just to remind you guys as Zost is finishing up his speed run, uh you all are watching Chase for the Record on Speed Gaming. If you go to speedgaming.org, you can uh find some links there for the events, ongoing events, upcoming events, and uh for the schedule. We have four channels of speed gaming this is the the main speed gaming channel and then there's speed gaming 2 speed gaming 3 and speed gaming 4 there are plenty of uh tournaments that are going on throughout the week throughout the months we have a link to the past randomizer that's the hottest thing right now uh the super petroid item randomizer is finishing up and uh i believe there are some other things that are going on like the final fantasy randomizer so check those out if you want and uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, my name is Justin Fend. I am joined by Wild Anaconda, and we are watching the three best Super Metroid runners try to beat that record for Super Metroid and percent. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us, making this making this as successful and, and awesome as it is. Getting a nice moonfall there during the escape for Zost. As he makes his way to the end. Ooh, little left side little left action. side spark. <laughs> All right. I dig it. I can dig it. So, uh, well, I, I'm just going to stay quiet. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy. So we have this thing. We have this thing in Super Metroid. And, uh... There's this room over here on the right. What could be in it? Do you know what's in it, Wild? Uh, I have no idea. I've never been in there in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you go into this room, uh, you can uh, you can save some creatures that you may have found throughout the uh, Super Metroid video game. We call that saving the animals. It's a very uh, <laughs> it's a very how how do I describe it? It's a very, yeah, it's a very interesting meme, very interesting quirk that you could do uh, for the video game, for your speed run. And uh, we see Zos just sort of teasing us uh, in front of the, in the, the animal's room. Uh, he's trying to do the Alcatraz well, with the high jump, it's actually really hard, he's doing some wall jumps there. Um, but yeah, a little taste of... Uh, of the meme, I guess. <laughs> I thought he was uh, just killing time for the four, 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 but it looks like he. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, the the deer fours. Mm -hmm. Could fours. could have gotten it. I think he think because he left with enough time to get it, but he was messing up the Alcatraz, so I think he just decided to abandon. Now going for actually a, another swag uh, exit here to the uh, for the game. I'll explain it afterwards if he doesn't quite get it, but it's really cool to see. Ah, he did! There, perfect. See, so you can get some uh, Samus Echoes um, if you land and uh, go into the ship as soon right as you land, you can keep those Echoes from the speed booster, so... That's, that's, that's the end of the run for Zost there. Finishing up with a mid-45. With a lot of uh, messing around there at the end. It's good to try and, you know, mess around a little bit. Complete runs. It's good, good, good for the morale. Keep the, keep the positive positive mindset going um you know if you could just if you're just grinding out a 
failed after failed attempts, it can really, really uh, weigh on you. So again, we have Behemoth taking on the Bomb Turizo. Uh, as we see Oats and Goats starting up his run as well. We'll see uh, what Zeus stops to do. He might be taking a little bit of a break before he starts up another attempt. But a uh, pretty good Bomb Turizo fight there from Behemoth. Again, you don't want that Bomb Turizo. You don't want his head to pop off. Uh, that will cost him a little extra time. So if you can finish him off with those missiles, that's really good. And then coming into the Terminator room. So in this Terminator room, you're going down this slope and uh, there's some gamers in the way. You want to make sure you destroy them and then destroy these waivers as you pick up the first energy tank. So we're looking for uh, an extra missile drop right there and uh, yeah, Gameth is in good shape. Should be a pretty good elevator time for him coming into Brinstar. Uh, again, Behemoth is the world record holder as of now, and uh, Zost is the former world record holder, as is Oats and Goats. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about these guys, Zosty is the current low percent ice world record holder, uh, and then as well as the... Oh, I'm taking that damage again, but Behemoth gets lucky, he gets the missiles, he's gonna go into the early supers room. Uh, Zosty is a uh, former world record holder for a lot of categories the 100 percent world record um just any sort of speed run of super metroid you've probably seen him do it uh oats and goats former world record holder for the any percent run here and the low percent ice run uh, so he, those are his accolades and behemoth this is the guy right now. He is on fire. He holds the world record for 80% and for 100%. And uh, they're both very impressive runs. If you guys have not seen them and you like Super Metroid speed runs, you should you should watch them. I highly recommend them. So, so yeah. Um, we have Behemoth. He is making his way down. He's going to grab these missiles. You want to have 15 missiles, so that's three missile packs. Uh, and you need that ammo. You uh, want it for the first mother brain phase mother brain is in like this glass jar and uh, you need 15 missiles and 10 supers uh, to do that that last part of turin uh, optimally so pretty good start to behemoth's run and uh, another good start for oats and ghosts as well so hopefully these guys uh, make it to the wreck ship and uh, get to continue on with their run as we see the deer force for Zosti. And it uh, looks like, yeah, he's taking a little bit of a break. We are only going to be here for maybe another half hour or a little bit more than that. But um, yeah, I hope you all have enjoyed the event. Chase for the record, we had one run uh, that was completed by Behemoth. Almost beat the world record. It was uh, very exciting. And uh, unfortunately, it was three seconds too slow. So. Hopefully one of these attempts that uh, gets off the ground will uh, be a good one. That's a really cool strat there from Behemoth. Um, doing a wall jump and then morphing, dropping the power bomb, grabbing himself a super, and then getting a big energy from the second CAG attack enemy, those little pods there. So, uh, getting the ammo and the health uh, really good. And he's going to drop another power bomb right here to open the door so that it can be opened up easily on the way back. When you use the, these power bombs on these doors, they get opened, and then you have to shoot them open the second time. If he doesn't do it there, he would have to lay a power bomb on the way way back out.
who into the water behemoth goes that's gonna cost them some time uh yeah that's that sucks <laughs> just no way no other way to describe it, it just uh, you don't want to go into that water yeah you can see hitting that door around 10 minutes optimally you know if everything goes well you're really you're wanting to hit it you know like you know mid like 9 30s um or like 9 40 ish so it's you can see it's look quite a bit behind there it does waste a lot a lot of time missing that uh, first try yeah we'll see um how oats and goats handles it he's on pretty good pace right now Yeah, you can see the players, they want to have uh, a little over 100 health when they come into Fantoon. You can farm these flames, so Fantoon, uh, throughout the fight, you'll drop these flames and you can shoot them and uh, they'll, they'll produce drops, they'll produce missiles, sometimes super missiles, sometimes big energy. And uh, if you get that, that will help you, but it's not guaranteed. You can see some of them just produce nothing. So. Again, the other, fan, fan the biggest RNG boss in this game. Go ahead. The other problem with the flames, too, is that their hitbox lingers for longer than you might think. Um, nice CWJ there from Oats and Goats. But, uh, like, you gotta be careful when you shoot the flames. You can't just immediately run into where the flame was because the, the hitbox stays for a little bit and you could actually get take a take a hit, with which in, in this run is dangerous because they, you know, 40, 40 damage a pop. Yeah, right now it's just a bit of a grind. These guys are trying to get past Fantoon. Uh, as you can see, it's not easy. <laughs> um, that boss he is the biggest slot machine today, and uh, none of these guys are really hitting the jackpot. So uh, just kind of have to keep going at it. And uh, yeah, again, your morale can decrease really quickly when you keep doing it like this. So uh, these guys are doing their best for you and uh, i hope you all are enjoying it and uh again welcome to chase for the record we're going to try and see if one of these guys can beat the super metroid any percent speed run held by uh behemoth at 41 minutes and 40 seconds yeah and uh not only would they be the new world record holder but they would be the holder of a thousand dollars as a matter of fact, should they break the world record during this segment, this, uh, this during this stream that we've got going for you, this Chase the Record um, series, there's $1,000 on the line for any of these players who does take the record, um, and a $100 prize for any player who actually gets a, a personal best during this segment. So there's not only time, the, the time, uh, good times on the line here, but money as well. Yeah, it looks like um, looks like Oats was ha had a pretty slow fight there, but um, he was trying to get that two round Fantoon and uh, just just unfortunately hit him with the super. <laughs> and uh, what that happens when you if you don't finish Fantoon off with that super missile, it's gonna send him into this rage state, and uh, that just wastes I don't know like at least twenty seconds. That's uh, a long time. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that rage state like Fantune is not vulnerable whatsoever. He just throws waves of flames at you, and uh, yeah, it's just it's it's no good for the speedrun. Absolutely not. So all these players in the you know, pretty early on in their runs now, um, you know. Again, uh, the the early game here has got some some awesome Moonfall tech. You know, it's a recent addition as of a couple of months ago. This, this uncapped fall speed, as you see, Behemoth here going so fast that you can even fall through platforms. Um, really, really awesome. And so a lot of uh, a lot of the time, um, you know, it's going to be a, a, a pretty early reset point for a lot of players is you know they want to get as as tight of an early game as they possibly can um 
as you know, you don't. It's not a huge time investment uh, to to reset over a smaller mistake. So we might see um, some resets coming out here for these for these guys. Um, but looking like all of them having a pretty solid start so far. So it's looking like he's going to be getting a 444 bombs right now. Maybe a 445. Yeah, On nice the money. <laughs> On the money. Yeah, 444 there. Yeah, pretty good start. So uh, in the beginning of this bomb trees fight, the strat that you see those do is he's going to morph uh, at the bottom of bomb trees feet and then he's going to manipulate him to jump back and then he's going to shoot five shots with the regular arm cannon and use some missiles you want seven missiles i believe to go into uh bomb trees yep. after the five shots that's going to finish him off so yeah, you saw him uh, yeah exactly and you saw him pick up the drops in a certain way so that he didn't have to wait for a second um set of uh those chozo balls that, uh, that he throws at you you want to grab you know all at least all but but one um drop left uh so that you can just pick up that last one you shoot four missiles and then grab the last one to put yourself at you know like three missiles and use the last three to kill bomb three so um it's like jd mentioned before you don't want that uh that head to explode it just wastes time yeah he's not vulnerable uh, in that period where his head explodes, so it's just a uh, just a nice way to save time. And just finish him off with those missiles. Yeah, and the the, way, the reason that that happened once he goes beneath 100 health, that's when the head explodes. And so you want to finish him off with a with a missile, get him down to exactly 100 health, which is why you do, you know, it's why you use exactly five regular shots and then six missiles and so that the seventh missile takes him from 100 to zero so it skips that last phase nice little mock ball there from zeus and then uh climbing up there into the monster party taking that damage boost um and grabbing himself the early supers Again, we are not gonna see Spore Spawn in this speedrun. He is skipped, and uh, we just grabbed these super packs right here, and that's gonna help us get out of Brimstar. What's a Spore Spawn? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. Of, it's some sort of plant, right? <laughs> I think. I don't know. Um. So looks like Behemoth is right behind Zeus, uh, just about to enter the Brinstar area. And again, these guys are just pumping out yeah, really good. Yeah, really good early games. Uh, they just need to get past that wreck ship area. If we get a run that gets up to Gravity Suit, you'll see in the splits like where they're at, and uh, they'll be on pretty decent pace. So. Hopefully it happens for them. We see up and two by Zos, uh, really good. And uh, it's been moving on into the Green Hills area and then upwards to get the early power bombs. Yeah, so what's really cool about uh, the bottom right hand corner of the screen there, we've got the pace for each of those players compared to, it's their current pace compared to the world record and then compared to their own personal best. Um, and so the, the uh, chase for the record, admins that are kind of piloting this um it's super cool you know it, it'll it'll let us know you know how far ahead or behind each of these players are of those respective times um so it's a really awesome way to be able to keep track of um how well uh, what, what how, how good of a pace these players are on um, especially for for those of you who don't keep up with the speed runs enough to, to really be able to tell just by looking at the times and their positioning in the run um so it's really, really helpful, a really great tool that they've got for us. And sub sub 840 uh, power bomb there for Zos again. Yeah, it's got a really nice pace going here. So he's going to be coming up to the moat, you know, either doing that CWJ or the diagonal bomb jump to get across there. Riding up the elevator with the spike. 
yeah, I think that spike actually hit him. Oh, it see, did. It yeah, did, you, yeah. You can see him get uh, hit as he comes out of this elevator. Those cag attacks, they shoot those spikes and then they can slow you down. There it is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So Zos gonna be setting himself up here, pressing up right against that door, setting up for the continuous wall jump. Gets the first jump. That was one frame. Now this next jump, he's got two frames to hit this right after the, uh, just a little bit after that transition goes away, the item fanfare, and he does nail it. So nicely done, first try there for him. Behemoth gonna be following suit there. He does not go for the continuous wall jump. He just goes right into the uh, d double bomb jump, um, which you know really only loses about a second. Um, as compared to going for the CWJ, assuming first try in each of those situations. All right, so sort of holding my breath in anticipation, I just want to see uh, what patterns Zost gets. As we see Behemoth right behind him is about to enter the moat area as Wild brought up. But uh, we need good patterns from this boss that Zost is on right now. Uh, this boss is a huge troll. I think that bomb spread might have caused a little bit of lag. But I, don't I know. think so. <laughs> so, uh, losing a few frames, but hopefully uh, it doesn't really even matter because yep. Fantoon's just going to do whatever he wants. So a big detail in this fight is um, when Fantoon spawns, or when Fantoon becomes vulnerable, he opens his eye and then uh, he shoots out a circle of flames. And basically, uh, the players want to shoot out those flames as soon as they spawn, so that they, they don't expand outwards. And uh, that's going to give them this big pile of drops. As we see a fast pattern there. Uh, and, and it looks oh. like looks like Zos could have finished it off, but um, shot was, yeah, so, shot too many missiles, and uh, honestly, it's a pretty slow fight anyway. So it looks like he's just messing around, and he might do go for a reset. Yeah. Yeah. But we well, have, well, now we can turn our attention to Behemoth now. Yeah, and we have Behemoth also taking on Fantoon. Again, it's just been one of those days the luck has not been on our runner's side, so. Seen, seen a lot of slow patterns from Fantoon. We see a mid pattern. Uh, oh, golly. but there were too many missiles. That's the problem there, like because there was flames in the way, and so you you want to try and account for the flames eating one of your missiles. So sometimes you end up shooting an extra missile, but then sometimes it doesn't actually hit the flames. So you end up shooting two because what you'll notice is players shoot two missiles and then two missiles again. And if you shoot them too quickly, Fantoon will just disappear. And that's what happened in that first round there uh, for Behemoth. Uh, he's got to be a little bit careful here. He's going down a little bit, but here he goes, going for a nice air Doppler there. Um, not looking too good here, though, for... Yeah, looks like he pretty much gave up on that one. Yeah. Uh, had uh, had to go into about four rounds, so... But if these guys can get past Fantoon, like, under 11 minutes and 20 seconds, they'll have a... a a pretty decent paced run so that's what they're trying to do again uh it's just a lot of resets right now just hasn't been very lucky uh on the boss fights thus far and that's just all it's been luck like these players have been putting out some really good times getting to fantoon it's just the fantoon luck itself has just been really really poor for everybody you know especially oats and goats just this entire session that we've had going he's just been getting i think maybe like one or two fast patterns and that's it you know it, it's he's been getting this really really awful rng it's just really unfortunate yeah so it looks like behemoth's taking a, a little bit of a break we have zosti starting up his next run oats and goats grabbing himself the charge beam Another up and two, man. We have uh, a lot of runners nailing that. It's not as easy as it looks. These guys are the best of the best. They just make it look easy. So that uh, is frame perfect. You have one frame to get that jump. And 
do a little bit of farming here. He's gonna farm the, the CAC attack for a super missile. He's gonna shoot this CAC attack again. Another super missile, open the super door, and then up he goes, the red tower. He's gonna do a charge shot. The charge shot actually moves slower, so does a little jump to manipulate the rippers, and then the charge shot actually hits a shot block up there at the top. Ooh. Uh, a little bit of a, a short damage boost there, so Osinko is very aware of where he was and how far he was going, so stopping himself short and uh, just making sure he doesn't fall into any of those uh, those little mouth, uh, those little piranha plants, as I like to call them. Uh, if you get stuck in there, you get you, you're inside of their they hold you for I don't know quite a few seconds. So. Yeah, and that's doubled if it's a uh, ceiling Samus Eater. So uh, th those are those are extra bad. What you can do sometimes is in that first room where uh, JD was talking about Oats and Goats doing that shorter damage boost. If you actually damage boost in such a way, you can actually damage boost up into one of the upper Samus Eaters and get stuck there for a really, really long time. All right, can we get some... Uh, Take my, or well, I don't know what it's like, something, take thy RNG or whatever it is for Oats and Goats here for his uh, Fantoon fight coming up. We want to we wanna see some, some good patterns for Oats here. Okay, he's got the setup for the CWJ. Let's hope he makes it past the mode first. But uh, yeah, anything to get Oats and Goats going, he's on his way to the wreck ship. Yep. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's been quite a long session for him and uh, he just hasn't had the luck go his way he hasn't really gotten past the wreck ship uh too often and that whole section right there uh right before you enter the ship that's no gimme either <laughs> if you make if you make any of these jumps too early or like you jump too high you can fall into that water and then you have to go all the way back to um the the land near the door and uh it's just a huge time waste. And uh, shout outs to my boy Behemoth, who that happened to when he first debuted this route with the world record, uh, which was a the, the 43, whatever it was. Do you have that with you still? I can't remember exactly. But he, he did fall in the uh, the water there in that run. Yeah, I believe it was a 43-48 when he debuted yeah. it. And that was back in uh, 2014. Okay, so let's see a mid. All right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man. Okay, oh, so I'm feeling for my boy Oats right now. So all things considered, if he gets this slow pattern, okay, you got a lot of missiles in. If he gets a fast pattern here, uh, looks like it's not gonna happen. Um, yep. Hopefully he gets a mid pattern, but uh, he could still come out with a pretty good kill time at least. Oh, he messed oh. it up. A fast. Bring it back. Oh, no. no run backs for Oats and Goats. It's just oh. been one of those days. Um, yeah, that's that's Super Metroid, guys. <laughs> when when you get it going, it, it's incredible to watch. But uh, you have to get past this huge hurdle known as the Ghost. Ooh, Zos trying to do some fancy uh, kegos on the kegos there. Getting through and getting a uh, 607 Burn Star elevator time. Ooh, uh, Zost, I think, ran into the door, so he's gonna have to set up a, a backup mock ball. Okay, he does it. Yeah, so then the uh, the waivers there are gonna be a little bit out of. Uh, position as they do move when they are off screen so having take taking a little more time in that room kind of messed that up you can't do the uh, the damage boost that we normally see there yeah we call that the monster party because uh there's just a ton of enemies up there and uh if you don't go through there as quickly as possible they uh you're gonna be partying with them so <laughs> <laughs> i think there's like seven there's like four waivers and three side hoppers up there so
So just right now, I want to take some time to say that uh, you are watching Chase for the Record. Um, and right now, it's the uh, this episode of Chase for the Record is featuring Super Metroid with the top three any percent players in the world right now, all trying to beat the current any percent world record, which is set by one of our runners here, Behemoth, with a 41 minute, 40 second time. Um, and you are watching this on twitch.tv slash speedgaming which on this channel and its uh, additional three other channels speed gamings two three and four are constantly always putting on um some kind of speed running event in in some form whether it's a tournament or a showcase or uh something like this you know there's lots of stuff going on currently and more and more tournaments always opening up um and other events happening as well like currently right now there's a super metroid randomizer tournament there's a link to the past randomizer tournament there's some final fantasy stuff going on in the future there's a binding of isaac tournament starting on halloween i think signups are still available for that um and I believe uh, speedgaming.org, is that correct? Is the, uh, the yes. website that yeah that you can go to and um, you can you know see the schedule, all other events that are happening that, uh, from that website. So make sure that you give this channel a follow, uh, Speed Gaming's two, three, and four a follow as well, so that you um, do not miss a single speedrunning moment. Um, please also follow these runners, uh, all Behemoth, Zost, and Oats. Um, you know they're they're always doing runs of this high caliber. So you know as soon as we we are done here, um, you'll be able to continue watching them. You know for whenever whenever is convenient for you. Um, my name is Wild in Akana 69, joined by my co-commentator Just Defend. Thank you so much everybody for being here. If you're a regular to the Speed Gaming channels, um, if you're coming here from the front page, welcome. Um, we're we're glad, very glad to have you. All right, so this is coming up to the biggest hurdle, or excuse me, to one of the hurdles right here at the moat. He needs to get across it. Doesn't want to fall into the water. And with All a right. nice backup. Yeah. So right there, we call that the horizontal bomb jump. Two bombs, and you just propel yourself across the water. But now he has to get past uh, this boss that has just pretty much been a wall for the past, uh, I want to say, hour of attempts, mm -hmm. just like not letting anything through. But hopefully Zos can do it here. Yes, yeah, so let's see what kind of uh, RNG or luck that uh, Zos can get here. Fantoon has three different speed patterns that he can give you a fast, a mid, or a slow. The difference between the fast and the slow patterns is going to be about 10 seconds. Um, over the course of two rounds, the difference between a fast, fast, and a slow, slow would be about 20 seconds with absolutely nothing that you can do in real time to manipulate that. So let's go ahead and see what kind of patterns that Zos is going to get here. Not a fast. Not a mid. <laughs> My oh my. Round one slow. Getting in uh, six, maybe seven? I couldn't quite, I think it was six missiles there in that first round. That's kind of what he wants. And then followed by another, um... okay, so mid, uh, slow mid. All right, good round 11.04. That's, that's, that's not a bad kill. That's not a bad kill. Yeah, not, not bad at all. Uh, pretty slow. You're going to see on the splits uh, if Zosi makes it to the gravity suit, but um, he's he's probably behind on his splits, but pretty close to uh, the record. We'll see. But he's yeah, the still, record's a... Uh, sorry. He's still he's still behind, uh, just uh, to make that point. But yeah, he's yeah. going to continue on. The uh, the world record fan tune kill was a 10 minute, 59 second time. Um, and Zos was about five seconds behind that with an 11.04. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta you gotta take what you get. <laughs> it's just the the nature of the game is so it'll beat you down with uh, this bad RNG that you get from the first boss. This is um, what we like to call the new route. So the old route is a more traditional way of beating the game. If you fight the first boss, Kraid, then Fantoon, and then uh, Dragon. 
and finally finishing off with Ridley. This route comes to the wreck ship first. Uh, we see Sosi taking a little bit of damage there. That's bad. Um, that is bad. Yeah, so this new route goes to the wreck ship first, takes on Fantoon, then Ridley, finishing up with Kraid and then Dragon. So the boss order is different. The route uh, saves quite a bit of time um, at the high levels. So it's just uh, the, the biggest thing about this route is that it's hard. It's very difficult to finish runs. So really, so uh, Zost was below 121 energy there. These e spikes hits do 60 damage each, so he needs, at a bare minimum, 121 health to make it through there. So he did he he farmed a little bit um, in the previous uh, two rooms previous to this one here, um, and did get some uh, some big health drops. That was good. So that put him above the health that he needed, um, with a little bit of extra room to spare here, because um, health is not at, after this point. Health is not really a a big concern um there's nothing really that's going to kill you there's not a whole lot of damage that you're taking from here until your next energy tank that you pick up right before the high jump item all right so is this the getting himself getting himself the gravity suit we see a reset from osin goes it looks like he just turned his system off uh Really not going well for him today, but uh, hopefully he can bounce back and maybe get a pretty good run going uh, as we're coming near to the end of uh, the chase for the record. But we have at least Zost. You see on the pace right there versus PB plus 16, but versus the world record plus 6. And you might be wondering, how can that be? How can, <laughs> how can his PB uh, splits be that much better than the world record splits and it's just because his early game is good and uh, the late and mid game isn't as good as behemoths so uh, that's where he can make up the time that he needs uh, to get himself a PB or uh, a world record so we'll see if he can do it yeah, and Behemoth now um, making it across the mode at about uh, 939 coming into Fantoon here let's see what kind of patterns that he gets now I, I just want so badly for one of these guys to get a fast, please. <laughs> okay, so a mid there. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, miss it. Only gets about two missiles in there. That's not good. Does get a fast here. This aerial Doppler does get five missiles in. Still about three short from what he wants to have. He's going to need to take another round here. Likely a mid. There it is. Uh, and there goes Fantoon. So that's not too bad. An 1108 kill. That's only about four seconds behind the pace that Zost was on in his in this run that he's currently doing right now. So it's not too bad. Only about uh, uh, nine seconds behind um, the world record Fantoon kill, which is again it was a 1059. Ridiculous having full health and full missiles after that, getting like just this, this sparsest looking drops, but it really didn't, didn't need anything because he had it full there. It was kind of funny to see there from Behemoth. So Actually, only a couple supers. Yeah, so one thing he, he would have liked to have had are power bombs. So he only has one, he's going to save it here. He would have wanted another, an additional power bomb to break those blocks there. So exactly. he's going to lose a little bit of time, but um, he wants to keep, he wants to hold on to this one power bomb that he has for the attic. You need that to destroy all of the enemies. And um, if you don't kill all of the enemies up in the attic, you're going to be locked in that room. So you need the power bomb. Yeah, it's uh, an interesting, you know, feature of Super Metroid. Some of the rooms have an enemy kill count requirement. Um, some of it is, you know, kill every enemy in the room. Some of it is just a certain, a specific number of enemies in the room. Um, this particular room is you got to kill all eight enemies, I think. So it's quite a few. Ooh, taking that hit, but he's okay. He's still got, still got quite a bit of health there. Um, so he doesn't really need to farm any health. Getting a power bomb would be good. We might be seeing him farm the uh, the B Tom on in, on his way if he doesn't get good uh, power bomb drops from the crabs on his way out of here. Um... Yeah. 
So Zost right now just doing some uh, some cleanup in Lower Norfair on his or in uh, Upper Norfair, excuse me. Um, before going down into Lower Norfair, he's gonna be getting four major items. He wants to be getting high jump and ice, which he's already gotten. His next stops is gonna be speed booster and wave beam. Then he's gonna be heading down into uh, Lower Norfair. Um, the reason for getting these items obviously is to go fast, um, and for multiple reasons. You know, high jump and speed booster are you know movement based items where it's gonna be you know physically moving quickly. Um, ice beam and wave are gonna be damage based items um, to help him uh, kill enemies and bosses, particularly Ridley, um, and later bosses as well, very quickly. Uh, so there's the gravity suit for Behemoth. So in a second here, we're going to see those splits pop up for him. Uh, meanwhile, Zosti's ammo count... Oh, nice. Getting a super missile from that um, uh, Garuda, that flying enemy. Um, nice there, because his super count is a little, little bit low. We'll see... Um, if he gets any uh, other drops from enemies and then how many times he decides to farm going for this right side bubble mountain climb not quite getting it that wall jump there that he was trying to do is very very tight um so so I'm, awesome when pulled off yeah so i mentioned doors you're gonna see it with that door right there uh right as he enters this hallway where the door has to center so on his way back, he's he might opt to jump through that door. He only has one missile. I don't know if he might use the speed echoes or not. But uh, again, these little things save a little bit, little amounts of time uh, throughout the run. And anything you you can get uh, to get this world record is helpful. Yeah, and so you might think, you know, oh, he jumped through the door. Why wouldn't he just run straight through to keep his his speed? You know, but again, like like JD was saying, it's um, oh, and then we did see Behemoth farm the uh, the B Tom there for some more power bomb drops. Um, Zos using bombs here because you don't want to use ice because it's going to freeze the enemies first before you kill them. Um, but again, back to the doors. Uh, the amount of time that it that the door spends aligning um to the center of the screen could actually be take longer than it would to jump through the door, fall back down, and restart your uh, your your running speed. Um, so if you can align the door yourself, it can save some uh, real time as opposed to the uh, just the game time there. Zost, uh, his super missile count is not very encouraging, but not uh, at all. Hopefully, he'll he'll get some good luck from the metal pirates down in Lower Norfair. Uh, he has to get through this section first. Uh, we have a big trick coming up called the Lava Spark, but. Uh, he has to keep his movement clean as he makes his way there. That's a little damage boost. You gotta open the door and then run through. This room is just really clunky and slow. Because with speed booster, you can't actually gain any speed in lava. Um, so you just gotta, you know, move slowly. Arm pump as fast as you can. So here comes the that uh, lava spark that uh, JD was just talking about here. Sets up the charge nicely. Damage boost and nicely done. So we're gonna see. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say uh, he has to go through this pause menu first, but uh, going down this elevator, um, usually you want to be around 20, 20 minutes and thirty seconds. It's going down around like twenty forty five, so uh, a little bit behind, but. Um, it's, it's it's not too bad. Hopefully he can make up some of that time fighting Ridley. And, you know, if, if he has a fight, anything like we did see earlier, his Ridley fight was just on point. Very, very good. Um, so we're going to see how that goes. What we did see, uh, he was he did pause and turn those beams off. What he wanted to do that he didn't quite get is he wanted to pause and then hit the elevator, but he actually missed going down the elevator. And what that'll do is just save about 40 frames so that Samus doesn't need to fully disappear off screen before hitting the transition, um, as opposed to just her feet hitting the uh, transition blocks at the bottom of the, uh, the screen. So Metroid is full of, you know, really small time savers just every everywhere. Um, so it's definitely takes some time to be able to learn learn them all and incorporate them into your into your runs here. 
like this one here, where Zosa's going to charge a spark and use the Echoes to kill two of these Key Hunters. Now, not only is that good for the you know those drops, he did end up getting a super, which is crucial because his count is very, very low. Any super he can get would be great. Um, but also with these two power bombs that he lays for him, is the more enemies that are in that room, the more lag there's going to be. And so he saves a couple of seconds of, of just lag time um, from those two power bombs by having those two key hunters dead. Gaining some pretty good luck. Yeah. Uh, entering the wasteland, he got a big jump from one of the Tasigas. He's going to K go through that first platform. He does not get the second one. It's not too bad. Now he's going to try to set up these shine sparks uh, for these metal pirates. As we see Behemoth, he's struggling a little bit to get through the Bubble Mountain. Wow, okay, great super drops there from those Metal Pirates for Zosh. He's all the way up at 9 now. Yeah, his health is looking good. Uh, he's going to farm a little bit. He, you notice like some of the different strats that these players are doing. Behemoth, he does not farm at all when he comes into this area, so he saves a little bit of time there versus the other players. But Zos, he's doing this so he can set up this X factor on, uh, on Ridley. Yeah, Behemoth does not actually do the X-Factor shots, but Zos' ammo count was exactly where he wanted it to be. Getting getting really great drops from those Metal Pirates really uh, saved him there. And unfortunately, missing one of those X-Factor particles, now that's... Um, oh, okay, he got lucky there where it actually hit really, but it's actually um, doubly bad, uh, for lack of a better uh, word there, is not only did you, you know, miss the damage uh, on Ridley there, and so that's an extra charge shot you have to do, but he did end up hitting it anyway. But you can't actually shoot or charge a shot or do anything while that particle is still on screen. So he had to wait for it to either disappear or hit Ridley, which luckily it did. Oh, gosh, that's um, that's really bad for Zos. <laughs> Taking a lot of damage. Uh, Ridley is just being a big jerk to him. Um, sometimes when you do these charge shots, Ridley's tail will just get in your way and uh, yeah. eat, eat these shots up. And uh, yeah, this is looking not not too good for Zeus. And uh, it looks like he's fully aware that his yeah. run is dead and uh, he's just gonna accept that fate. Um, yeah, it's very unfortunate. And again, that's just the nature of the beast. That just that's just how how it goes. Sometimes, you know, like we talk about Fantoon and his RNG, you know, being you know one of the biggest RNG bosses. But I mean, the other bosses are no joke either. You cannot sleep on them for sure. And Ridley just giving you know, those pretty pretty unfavorable patterns. Um, not what he wants to be seeing. Behemoth now going setting himself up for the lava spark as oats and goats going for um the cwj behemoth wow was very very close to bonking that ledge there and would not have made it only about like a pixel or two of space um of leeway so very very tight and oats and goats missing the cwj but getting the, the ba uh, backup double bomb jump very very nice getting through at about 9 39. yeah it looks like behemoth is uh, a little bit behind he did mentioned that he was having some controller issues uh so he might be wrapping up shortly but we'll see if he can finish uh his, his last run here uh, last couple of attempts maybe again super metroid is just one of those games where you have to be very confident in your controller because you're using all the buttons you're using everything the shoulder buttons and uh, if the controller is no good, your your speed runs gonna suffer. So uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty tough reality. But um, yeah, hopefully Behemoth will get his controller uh, working again, and uh, hopefully he can do more re world record attempts later on this week. Yeah. I think we saw a fast pattern for oats and goats. Wow. Ooh, missing a couple of those misses there. He might be able to, to make that up, though, with some really good Dopplering. Maybe get some mid, maybe. He does, a fast mid. Okay. Oh, his missile count is just so low. He just was not getting the missile drops that he needed. Unfortunately, couldn't even make the best of that situation. Uh, there's a couple more missile drops for him. Getting another mid. All right, should be able to clean this up right there. There it is. Okay, so a fast mid-mid. Not bad by any means. Behemoth with an excellent double Kago there going into the Metal Pirate room here. Things are quickly heating up 
Um, hopefully going to get some super drops. Wow, getting three super drops there from that Metal Pirate. He's likely going to get just to lead the one he wants good. And so his health is, you know, a little lower than what he might want. But I mean, Behemoth is, he's, he's good. He's not going to let that uh, deter him from um, going all out on this Ridley fight here with all of these supers that he has. So again, um, this is going to be 30 charge shots until Ridley turns to red and that that then the player knows um that Ridley is half dead at that point it'll be another 12 charge shots and all nine super missiles until Ridley is dead and you saw uh, behemoth doing a little bit of a time saver there where he jumped up really high vertically above Ridley and released the charge shot and so that's to get the charge shot off as early as possible to begin charging another one um, while Ridley is still uh not vulnerable so again, as we mentioned, you know, all those really small time savers in Super Metroid all add up. Yeah, this is a, a really nice manipulation here by Behemoth. He is standing on the very edge of this platform, and uh, that just makes it so that Ridley cannot hit Samus as he's doing this pogo pattern. He's going to use the super missiles, as Wild said, and uh, he just needs to shoot about 12 more shots. Uh, maybe even 11, and uh, that's going to be the end of Ridley. He just needs to make sure he doesn't take too much damage. He's getting hit right there. Ridley is almost dead. There it is. Yeah. Nice fight. Nice fight. So, after Ridley is dead, he's going to turn off uh, Ice and Spazer. He wants to have only the Wave Beam on. That's going to help him later on. Uh, in the speed run, and uh, he gets a lot of ammo, but not a lot of health. Uh, what is Behemoth going to do here? I don't know. Yeah, his, his, all that those drops are really clustered together too. So we're going to see what he's going to do. Here, he's going to take some some damage. Looks like he's instead of running through the acid, he's going to decide to take some damage boosts off of those Zebos. I'm only going to be doing a very small amount of damage to him. Um, We'll see if he goes for this uh, damage boost speedball strat here. You can taking a hit from that Duskiga is going to do 40 damage. He's putting him at 64 health. So we'll see. This strat is very fast. It looks like he is going to go through it though with it still. Um, I can't blame him for that. This not doing that, that room can take much, much longer. And then going through without taking that damage anyway would definitely be difficult. So he does need to be careful. All of these enemies, these red flying bugs called Key Hunters, will do 50 points of damage to him if they hit him. So he needs to be very careful. Uh, that one coming down and sniping him at 7 health. Can't really take a hit from anything else at this point. Yeah, he might not survive this. <laughs> you can. We we just saw Zos. Um, oh, we see a little bit of farming. And he only gets a small health. We saw Zos get through this last area with the three musketeers without taking a hit. It's uh, incredibly hard, oh. and he falls into the spike pit, and that is going to end his oh. run. You know what I think happened there? He wanted to stop on a dime and hit and uh, you know collect that drop, get the health drop there. But when you're one thing we didn't mention about like arm pumping is when you're angling down or up or changing the direction of that gun, if you're on that pixel that it pushes you forward, if you're on a slope, it could actually send you forward and actually make it uh, that one pixel, you'll, it'll actually push you off the ground and you'll start to fall. And so what I think happened was when he angled down to shoot that, uh, that uh, enemy coming out of the ground, it did that. It did just that, pushed him off and then kept him going forward and he didn't realize it until after it was too late and he fell right into the spikes. Okay, guys, we are uh, just about winding down. These might be the last few attempts for our runners. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, this is Chase for the Record on Speed Gaming, and uh, I hope you all have enjoyed it. We had one run that was completed by Behemoth. Gets a 41-43. Not good enough to beat the 41-40, unfortunately, but uh, it was really exciting to watch. Just almost seemingly out of nowhere just didn't really expect it so uh yeah i'm glad we could show the game off for you guys it's really tough uh, like this game the speed run is really optimized and yeah, hopefully you all will, will keep on watching follow the runners and uh yeah you'll see more high tier play
Yeah, and so as Just Defend mentioned, you know, we are kind of wrapping up our uh, chase for the record featuring Super Metroid and the three best Super Metroid runners, Behemoth, Zost, and Oats. Um, as we are kind of winding up here, these are going to be the last runs that we that we will uh, have featured. Um, so as soon as uh, Zost and, and Oats and Goats finish up these runs, we'll, we'll be uh, saying our goodbyes. But again, we thank you so much, everybody, for coming by um, and enjoying. Uh, uh, going along this ride with us, um, this is really awesome to to watch and be a part of, and I'm 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 hoping that you guys all feel the same way. Yeah, first things first, we gotta see if Oats and Goats, um, if he can get himself going on this run, he could potentially PB. Like, well. Won't rule anything out at this point, but um, he definitely has a lot of time he can save in the late game. So um, we're going to stick around for a little bit and uh, see if he can do it. Okay, so Zost nearly uh, got hit by the um, one of those enemies and would have had the same problem that I think it was Behemoth uh, happened to before where um, he would have taken damage and then not necessarily guaranteed those missile drops that he needed to get through that, uh, that room, but he did manage to recover it, kill the enemy in time to not take damage and make it through. Oats and Goats was uh, going for the above lava strats in the uh, rising tide room there, as we like to call it, but uh, missed that damage boost. Getting up the bubble mountain, we uh, jokingly call that cack attack up there. Maybe the hardest boss in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, that guy can, uh, can really troll you. Uh, it's pretty much random when he shoots out those little spikes. So um, if you're trying to wall jump up there, you can just knock you right off and you fall all the way back down. So it's really, really demoralizing. And you only have a, a fraction of a second when he pops on screen to kind of tell if he's starting to inflate, uh, which is your cue to know, okay, I don't need to jump up there because he's going to inflate and explode with spikes and he's going to knock me down. So you've got to just kind of wait there for a second, wall jump on the wall one extra time or... Just delay it a little bit to get around those those spikes, and then you can uh, make it up there. So, so Ozen goes with four supers, farming twice, going to six. So not not the greatest, but you know, he could just get super lucky later on with uh, with super drops. So it's not uh, not the not the end of the world. I like this red tower climb from Zost. He, he gets up there so quickly just with that one shot. Really cool to watch. Really good climb by him. He's doing a little bit of farming, gets both of those enemies. And uh, yeah, he's on his way to get the early power bombs. We see Oats and Goats picking up the wave, the wave beam. That's his last beam upgrade, taking a little damage boost, uh, doing a little fast fall through the blocks so those spikes there those are fake uh drop blocks and uh, you can actually fall through them a little bit faster if you aim down and you turn around uh, it's just a little uh just a little hidden tech in the game uh in a game that's full of hidden tech so yep oh there's zos riding up with that spike this time it didn't get hit by it spike keeping him a little company go, uh, going up that elevator um, but the way that that, uh, you are mentioning that quick fall there through those, those, uh, spikes works, any crumble blocks, um, is, uh, the turnaround animation is what we call an uninterruptible animation. Nice, uh, lava spark there from, from Oats. It's an uninterruptible animation, so if you get, you know, hit by something or whatever, normally Samus flinches and, and, and kind of jumps back a little bit, but if you're in the middle of that, um, that won't actually happen. You'll still, you know, take damage or whatever, but you'll you'll maintain your um, turning. And so the same thing happens uh, with crumble blocks. Is if you are in the middle of turning when you hit those crumble blocks, you'll maintain your speed, and then the crumble blocks will break beneath you, and you'll continue falling at the same speed instead of landing and having to reset that speed. So that's a pretty cool piece of uh, of tech there. So it's it's coming up to fast pillars. And nailing that, very well done. And let's check out his worst room in the game. Very aptly named. 
Yeah, you're dropping this power bomb so that it uh, breaks the blocks up there and it gives uh does a little bit of damage there erasing that hitbox from one of those wall pirates and then you get to wall jump through wild oats yes. and goats is 12 seconds behind his run do you think he can get himself 100 dollars on this run <laughs> he has to he has to get a good ridley fight first but uh he might be able to do it. I absolutely think I think so. Oats and Goats, his his technical ability is just so so high. I he can definitely do it. You know that's like this. The rest of this run is hard, and he's gonna he's got his work cut out for him to make up that 12 seconds plus more. Um, but I mean he he's definitely if anyone's capable of it, it's definitely him. Um, Zos getting some nice patterns. I think it was a mid into a fast. Um, so. Oh no, missling just oh, it's a little too early, unfortunately. Um, he was one missile off from killing Fantoon, so he did enter that rage state. Um, but yeah, so $100 on the line here for Oats and Goats if he PBs. If he world records or any of these players world records, they actually have $1,000 that they can earn um, for getting a world record. And so if Oats and Goats was actually able to pull ahead of his PB, gain those 12 seconds back, he would actually be ahead of the world record at this point. Getting that 10th super, very nice. And so after that run, I think, we, you know, we, he has passed the cutoff there for starting new runs. So I think uh, Zos might not to begin another one. We'll wait for Oats and goes to finish out this run. Really excellent x factors there from him. I think hitting every single particle on, on each of those. Yeah, that's a bit of a troll there with Ridley when he just goes all the way to the top of the screen and you can't hit him. Um, but uh, Oats and Goats is handling it well. He's not taking any damage so far. Just wants to keep firing off these charge shots and uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully Ridley will come down and pogo for him. This isn't too bad either. Okay, there's the pogo. He's gonna get him to turn over, turn around. And he's gonna use these super missiles and then a, a few more shots. And um, Ridley should be dead. Very it's nicely done. done. Yes. Yep. So uh, again, he's gonna pause. He's gonna turn off uh, ice and spacer. Uh, that's gonna enable him to use the uh, power bomb combo with the wave beam we call the x-factor he needs some life he needs some ammo he's got it uh doesn't have any supers but hopefully he can farm a little bit and maybe get that back up Nice little damage boost off the Desika, morphing into a ball at the very last second. It's like so, it's like one of the tightest jumps you can do to get yourself into that tunnel. Use the speed ball to break the, the little bl blocks there, the bomb blocks. It's getting some good luck there from the first and the second. So not taking any damage. It looks like uh, we have a run here for Oats and Goats. He's 21 seconds behind his PB, but uh, he can make up a lot of time in the end game. And uh, I don't know, uh, hopefully he can do it and uh, get himself maybe $100 for a new PB. Yeah, we'll see. Only time will tell. So he does need to be careful here. He's got a good uh, start to this room. Key enter uh, manipulation should be proper. There it go. Oh, wow. And even skipping that last one there too very nice no damage yeah he could have afforded that last hit uh, maybe to go a little bit faster but having uh, a little extra health when you come in uh, when you're coming out of lower norfair it, it's it's not bad so very nicely done by oats uh we're rooting for him hopefully he can get himself a good run here uh he definitely deserves it after yeah. all of the you know the slow slows that he was getting today he definitely deserves 
definitely deserves a good run here. Um, yeah, but again, you guys are watching Chase for the record. We're wrapping up here. Uh, we have oats and goats on the final run of uh, of the day of the event. And uh, yeah, thank you, thank you all for watching. And uh, we're gonna see if uh, oats can get himself uh, a new personal best. So now we're gonna be seeing him go into Craig's lair. Um, nothing really technically impressive or difficult about this section, um, but what you're you're hoping for are really good drops from Craig. You want as many supers um, and power bombs as you can get, really, uh, from his drops. Um, really cool opening the door there, actually, from shooting using the wave beam to shoot across the uh, the room. Um, but he, you're looking for as many supers and power bombs as you can get. Um, to make farming, uh, needing to do the least amount of farming um, in Meridia as possible to make the boss fights go as quickly as, as, as you can. And right now his supers are looking really good. So he's likely going to be uh, getting full supers between whatever drops from Kraid and then mini Kraid drops where he's going to get likely four more supers. He's, he's probably going to be full on uh, supers. All right, so we need this quick kill. Oh, no. He's gonna do a charge shot. That's gonna freeze that that hand. Hands okay. Good backup. All right. Yeah. Nice backup. Gets himself the backup. When Crane opens his mouth like halfway, that's when you want to shoot the supers in. And uh, unfortunately, didn't get too many super drops there. But he's gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna assume that he's gonna use missiles on Mini Crane. Get himself uh, up to about nine supers when he leaves Crane's lair. And uh, hopefully he can continue on that this run. But he did lose a little bit of time uh, to Craig there, missing that quick kill. Definitely not as much though as if Craig had uh, spawned up out of the ground. So he definitely recovered really well. And like you said, using those missiles on Mini Craig, um, saving those missiles. So he's at nine and five right now, supers and power bombs respectively. So he's looking pretty pretty good on the ammo. Oh yeah, so that definitely cost them uh, a bit of time there. Nice little damage boost. That was cool. And um, farming one of those crabs on the way out. Again, you see, you you need these supers. You need one to exit the crates layer, and then you're gonna use uh, the super on one of these doors on your way to Bot Wound, and then you need six supers to fight Bot Wound because you're gonna do an X Factor, shoot six supers to finish off that mini boss. So uh, ammo is of the utmost importance in this game. Can't stress it enough. And then you just gotta hope for good super drops from Batwoon, and because uh, you're gonna need a couple more. Optimally, you know, like three, to like two or three, elite two at least, very bare minimum to get through the next two doors uh, leading to Dragon after Batwoon, and then you know, hopefully a little bit more for the actual fight itself. Okay, so this is, oh, uh, unfortunately, didn't get the speed echoes in time. You need the speed echoes to break those blocks, but this is game time for Oats. If he can execute this on point, he can save himself some time. There's the X Factor. There's nice six supers. Uh, very, very nice kill, and he got himself some supers, so his ammo is good. Uh, he's going to grab this energy tank and farm some of these leeches. Uh, I do not know the proper name for these enemies, but um, he's finally got himself the third energy tank. You need three energy tanks plus the various suit to finish the game because Mother Brain, uh, she shoots out this rainbow beam. If you do not have at least... Oh, uh, unfortunately didn't get that door open. If you do not have at least three energy tanks worth of health, uh, that rainbow beam will kill you. So you need that, that bare minimum. Those uh, leeches are, in fact, called Puyos. A nice... Uh, <laughs> the Puyos, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So some, some of these enemies got some funny names. Like, like if you've seen those uh, little um, snail... Not not the snail, I, I guess. The, the guys with spikes on their shells that kind of, like, dip into the ground. Those guys are called ouches. <laughs> so, so some... Uh, some some enemies have funny names. There's also uh, the like dark blue flies in the Meridia area called menus. So those green roly polies, ohms that we saw earlier. Let's see how this fight goes for uh, for Oats. 
Yeah, so this is the only boss that takes damage to Shine Sparking. Uh, for every frame that you are going through uh, Dragon, through the Shine Spark, and we see Oats and Goats, he's gonna use his ammo. Who doesn't quite do enough damage? Uh, he need needs to avoid getting grabbed right there. Oh boy, this is going really slowly for him. He doesn't get that Shine Spark charge. Uh, I think that's gonna be the end of his run. And uh, <laughs> that's just a. Uh, that's just the unfortunate way for the, the speed run to end. Yeah, he should have he he should have been able to kill him in that second round. But what happened was his first X factor. There were some particles that didn't they whiffed on Dragon's shell instead of actually hitting the stomach, um, so that he didn't quite have the, the damage in there for that. Um, but that's gonna be that's gonna be it for us and for uh, this episode of Chase for the Record. Um, again, please make sure to follow all of our runners: Oats and Ghost, Behemoth, and Zost. Um, and thank you again for everybody who, who came by, um, whether you are a regular to uh, Speed Gaming and Speed Gaming channels, or if you came in from the front page, thank you very much. We're glad to have you and uh, hope you hope you stick around. Um, so, yeah, my name is Wild Anaconda 69 and I was one of your commentators, joined by the one and only Just Defend as my wonderful co-commentator. So... You know, this was such an honor, really fun to do this. I'm sure, you know, I, I had a blast. What about you, JD? Uh, yeah, I thought it was great. Uh, we had some great attempts uh, throughout the day. And yeah, uh, we're trying to encourage more of uh, these events, this chase for the record, and see if uh, these speedrunners can get the world record in a short amount of time. Like, we had like three hours here and we had one attempt to almost get it so uh, really exciting again you're watching speed gaming on twitch if you go to speedgaming.org there are links there for the events ongoing event ongoing events upcoming events and there's a schedule for all things happening on uh four speed gaming channels this is the main channel and we have speed gaming two three and four so lots of stuff happening i know tomorrow we have zost he is in the super metroid item randomizer tournament he's going to be taking on cfb that's going to be at 6 p.m eastern time i believe so uh look that up in the schedule and i know this weekend we have the ocarina of time world championships whatever it's gonna be awesome to watch so yeah check out the schedule guys thank you again for watching uh my name is just defend and uh yeah thanks for being here and thank you for a wild anaconda for commentating with me yeah it was my my pleasure dude yeah so thank you again everybody and we'll see you next mission